Um, so we have a new page. You know, I, I fired this up on my personal page to let uh, all my friends and family know that I got a new uh, show. See, now I know. It's, fun. it's like the fifth new show in the last Whenever time. I work on oh, the connecting. table. Connecting. Oh, Ryan, Whenever what's up, I buddy? Whenever on the table. So this does uh, work uh, like. Don't mean my line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're live. Right on. All right, you two. I guess we're finally live now. I just wanted to see what the speech here. All right. That's pretty cool. You see what happened there? I, I, I don't. You're saying we can't do this through the wake dot show, but through my personal page just now that has an ad button down where people are have their camera activated or whatever. I just hit the button on one of these guys, Ryan Hughes. And next thing you know, he popped up like it was a Skype call and uh, just just chimed right in. So. All right. So you guys get over to the wake dot show. And uh, and like the new page and share the new page. It's the it's the wake dot show. Not you don't have to type out dot. You just put the little dot there. Uh, the wake dot show. All right, we're live. You said we are live. Well, good morning. Where? Good morning. <laughs> good morning and welcome to the conversation. Uh, it's uh, Fisher and uh, Johnny Torres. Oh, I guess we got to turn on. It's on the other side. It's on the other side there. Um, but uh, oh, I turned it on. I, Hold on, I'll, I'll go run, to I'll the. Over there real quick. You got it. I'll go. I'll cut to the other camera. No worries, no worries. All right, we're on uh, Monday through Friday, uh, seven to nine, and I uh, got a lot to get to today. A lot to talk about. We have our first, uh, um, our first sponsor coming on. Our first partner, I should say. Our our first partnership begins today, and uh, that'll be at seven thirty. We're very excited to uh, announce that and bring in our our I get you know our first client. Now this you know you guys behind the scenes you know your business people. And uh, you're used to dealing with this kind of stuff all the time. But as somebody who's always been just the person that's behind the microphone and my interaction with, uh, uh, you know, clients are usually, you know, very brief and, um, you know, whatever, in and out. Uh, it's cool to now deal with uh, people on a different level, deal with them uh, deal from a show level, a content level, and at the same time, a business level. So uh, good morning, everybody. Make sure you like, like the new page. Good morning, Tam. Uh, the new page is the wake dot show on Facebook. We invited a lot of people yesterday and uh, now this is week number four of the show. And even though we're still working on some uh, technical stuff, uh, behind the scenes, we are, we're still very excited about what's going out every single day. Um, are we, are we on the wake dot show? Yeah. Okay. You want to get to uh, stuff you should know and whatnot, or you still want to tinker just for a, a second and, uh, for a couple minutes and no, I think we can go ahead and start, uh, Mira. Uh, so, so far, getting uh, people just tuning in now. So, all right. Uh, so again, go to uh, to we get a full live feed, uh, including video and audio and all that kind of stuff. This is just my this is just my f camera phone right here, but we have a full studio set up. Uh, you know, and go live here. I might as well show you guys while I'm at it. If you don't mind, see what you're missing. Yes, sir. I need you a little bit more. There, more, there we go. Right Over there. To the left. Right there. there we That's go. All right. Yeah. That's all right. So here's the behind the scenes stuff here. Um, the wake dot show. So make sure. Uh, no, he's, uh, so <laughs> for anybody wondering, uh, so Fisher's got, uh, his phone on his personal sorry, sorry. Facebook page and, uh, just giving people a behind the scenes look. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud of what we're doing here. I'm excited about what we're doing. And, uh, and I, and I know that we still have, uh, we'll have, you know, we're still working out a couple of bugs here and there as we add new equipment every single day or every week. But, uh, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's time to invite and let everybody know, let everybody know there's a new show, uh, here in the Bay area. Well, and the numbers have been amazing. We've gotten incredible support thus far. Um, I think our Facebook page has doubled from last week, uh, in terms of likes and then, uh, again, we we're tracking some of the other top morning shows uh, here in Tampa Bay, and we're already outperforming two of the top morning shows on Facebook engagement. And so all those numbers are really promising, and they're really exciting to follow. Yes, they are. Oh, how are you doing this morning? Before I get into stuff, you should know, uh, I know you were up here late again last night to work out. <laughs> and how's the audio? By the way, for those of you at uh, The Wake Dot Show right now, facebook.com slash The Wake Dot Show, that was our our thing yesterday we had plugged yesterday, in some new yeah. equipment we weren't con sure if a, a sound card got fried or if there was miscommunication between one sound card and another sound card yeah it's but, a, it's it's, a, it's just there's so many components that go into pulling this off and uh and unfortunately we had an audio issue yesterday and i think we're we're working that out um you know and i think we might have found the solution 
Another uh, says Neil Spear on my personal page. Another first by Chris Fisher. Uh, thank you, Neil. We're a trying man. We, uh, you know, the last uh, five, wait, I guess four years or so since, you know, terrestrial radio and I had a parting of ways of sorts. Um, I, uh, I've been trying a lot of different things on the internet and we're getting closer and closer and closer, uh, to making, uh, you know, making something viable. Well, not to put down what you were doing over Be careful. Your Be careful. Radio Remember, station. it's all, per- it's all personal. It's all personal <laughs> to me, <laughs> but it seems like almost from day one, even when we were doing the pilot episodes, we were already getting a lot more viewers, uh, just in the way that we're we're doing this technologically, I think it presents it in a much more different way, where it doesn't just seem like you're a phone in the corner of the studio. You know, we've got cameras, we're switching, we've got uh, on-screen graphics. I think all those things, you know, kind of bring it to the next level. But you, you know, credit to you, you were doing what? this at your last station as well. Um, oh, listen, uh, radio state. I was uh, yesterday at Beasley. Uh, for those of you here in the Bay Area, that's one of the main uh, three radio companies. Um, and they are looking to do uh, an afternoon. They, they want to add afternoons to one of their radio stations, B98.7. Adult, it's an adult contemporary. And so uh, I've known Chad Thomas, the program director, and his wife, Christy, for a very long time. So it was over there yesterday. And this is the stuff that they're building. Yep. Um, you know, the old radio state company that I was at, they had built a performance studio and were in, are working on their infrastructure online. Uh, this, this radio station, they're on it, too. Um, and what we're doing here is is we're already ahead of it, hopefully. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're already ahead of that by a lot. Right. And um, and yeah, so we're gonna see what we can turn this into. But I'm very excited. Uh, speaking of which, you went. Damn it! I, there's a lot on my mind today, Cords. Um, I let let's let's talk. I, I want to I want to put a bug. Won't you come sit down? Are we? Oh, we don't have the. Uh, we're, we're missing the XLR. All right, all right. I can't put cords on the spot then this well, maybe morning there. If you want to grab an XLR, we just need an extra XLR. I, I got an XLR in my bag. I got my bag right behind me. <laughs> we'll I get got, it. I got my stuff. Hold on. All right. I'll get a nice little corner angle shot of you digging <laughs> through your bag. There we go. And then the mic. You had the mic yeah, the a minute ago. Right here. It's a great mic. The, the sure mic, right? And yeah, the Wake Dot Show is also a little informal. If you're like, well, you know, it looks like TV, but TV's a lot more formal than this. Yeah. You're exactly right. Come scooch it on back here. Um, and then give me a, a, little, a little mic check there. Check, check. There you go. Sounds good. That mic sounds great. All right, Cord. So uh, I was having a conversation with, uh, what? was it you or Johnny or both of you last week and we were just talking oh about an idea that we were thinking for lunchtime that don't want to oh, that was you and i that was you and i okay i briefly and, mentioned it to chords but we can go ahead and talk about it and so um go ahead and talk about the 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 actual concept that you and i were talking about sure yeah okay uh because uh, we were talking about doing trivia right and he was like, yeah, maybe one night a week that we, we come back up here, you know, on a Monday or two, you know, what do you have? You're, you're not doing your trivia nights out somewhere. And, uh, and we'll just host it live. We'll do it live and let people play at home and this and this and this. Anyway, that conversation led into, well, maybe we do it at lunchtime. We come back up. Sorry. And that's all right. You're testing the audio out there. And it sounds good for, on this end. Yeah. Um, and, you know, well, maybe we back it up to lunchtime because that's when we see a, a spike, you know, the first time of the day. It will be around lunchtime. So anyway. Well, uh, over the weekend, I was thinking, I wonder if this show that we're doing, the Wake Dot Show, is in its best time slot from 7 to 9 because you're competing with drive time on radio, which means, and I have friends tell, and I can't believe it, they're telling me that they are uh, taking us to work, you know, on that car ride, but I know that's not the great greatest way to consume what we're doing is while you're driving. So I, I wonder if we should think, I just want to put a seed in your, you know, plant a seed. But uh, think about doing this, say, from like 11 to 1 or something, you know, where we do. And we go right after that lunchtime crowd and promo it right at them and, uh, and talk to those people that are going to lunch, going to break, that aren't, you know, socializing, heading to, uh, you know, meeting up at the local Chinese buffet or something like that. I mean, I think that, uh, that it certainly has potential. Um, I would, I mean, we just have to take a look at the numbers and see okay. how, it, how, it, how it goes. Um, I definitely bring him up a little bit. I definitely do think that the morning deal that we're doing, I think it's starting to be very successful. Okay. Um, just with some of the reach, I mean, just some of the research that we were looking at yesterday where, you know, like Johnny was saying, in terms of engagement, Facebook engagement, we're already number three in the entire market. That's amazing. 
and that's going up against uh, um, a lot of your friends. Yeah, my yeah, <laughs> people that I know. Uh, one yeah. of the things that we did notice when uh, we were digging into some of these numbers too, because uh, the radio stations aren't doing a great j- job with their own pages, yeah. but some of those on-air personalities are doing a good job with their. Per- whoops. Um, are doing a great job with their personal pages. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, you were look. You and I are looking at Miguel and Holly there. At, uh, yeah, Hot. and because it was it was it was weird to us that their numbers were not good. You know, because this is the top forty station, one of the sure. top forty stations of town. They should be very active in this and this and this. That that absolutely should be part of their wheelhouse, right? And so uh, those numbers weren't good. And da, da, da. but then we went to their personal pages and mm-hmm. realized how active they are in their personal page, right? Uh, so that's good for them, but obviously not good for the uh, the company that's trying to that's populate. Right. You know, uh, but anyway, it's cool to see that our our numbers are where they are. At the beginning right. of the show, and and in and in a sense, you know, this is essentially your personal page too, because this is you are a partner in this deal. Oh, the Wake Dot Show. I know. Absolutely. Well, listen, right. this, this is uh, this is personal to me, and I know <laughs> it's personal to you too. It's personal to all of us. Well, but you know, and 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 it's a good strategy. I mean, he's yeah. he's wanting to make sure that his audience is carrying over. From his personal account, his other Facebook pages, over to this one, so we can, you know, say, hey, you know, this is Fisher's new home. Absolutely. All right. Well, I just wanted to bring you in, talk a little uh, business this morning, Cords. Sure. Uh, thank you for uh, getting us up and running once again. Oh, you're welcome. Now, let's continue with the Wake Dot Show coming up at uh, seven thirty. We'll be bringing in our uh, new partner, our first partner here at the uh, Wake Dot Show. I'm very excited about that. And for now, let's get to stuff you should know. The Supreme Court is allowing the Trump administration to fully enforce a ban on travel to the United States by residents of six mostly Muslim countries. The justices, with two dissenting votes, said Monday that the um, policy can take full effect even as legal challenges against it make their way through the courts. The action suggests the high court could uphold the latest version of the ban that Trump announced in September. President Donald Trump on Monday shrank two wilderness national monuments in Utah by at least half in the biggest rollback of public land protection in U.S. history, drawing praise from pro-development lawmakers and a lawsuit from environmentalists. Trump said former presidents abused the Antiquities Act uh, by putting unnecessarily big chunks of territory off limits to drilling, mining, grazing, road traffic, and other activities. Uh, Are you familiar with this, uh, uh, this particular act? Uh, a little bit. The Antiquities bit. Act? Yeah, I mean, this is more or less what Teddy Roosevelt started with the national parks. and. Well, I guess when it comes to national parks and stuff like that, those are acts of Congress. Yeah. Where this monument thing or acts of presidents, kind of like uh, the um, executive order. Right. Um, so his, his administration feels like past presidents have circumvented the, the Congress when they've wanted to, sure. you know, uh, you know, make these monuments or different, you know, stuff like that. Well, and if I remember correctly, he did the uh, President Obama did this towards the end of his second year. Yep. Uh, and so he yeah, didn't he went have, on a... yeah, he didn't have the support in Congress that he would have liked to do this through that, those means. Uh, it's tough because you go to that part of the world, right? You go to that part of our country and it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Uh, part of the country. Um, but again, as a Republican, you got to understand the the principles lie in the fact that th- this land should belong to the state. Right. This land should be belong to those communities, not to the federal government. And if you look at the portion of land that the American that the federal government owns in the western part of our country, it's massive. They own a large percentage. Uh, and and so really, this is returning those lands back to the state and local governments. Right. So if they want to go ahead and uh, and fence it off and say nope, no drilling here, that's fine. If they want yeah. to sell it to somebody, uh, that that's fine too. Right. Exactly. It should be up to the states to make that decision, not the federal government. Um, Trump said former presidents abused the Antiquities Act by putting unnecessarily big chunks of territory off limits to drilling, mining, grazing, and road traffic and other activities, a headwind to his plan to ramp up U.S. energy output. Former U.S. Representative Corin Brown of Florida was sentenced on Monday to five years in prison for her role in helping raise more than $800,000 for a bogus charity that was used as a slush fund. Just another politician taking advantage of the system. Brown, 71, was convicted in May on 18 counts of participating in a conspiracy involving a fraudulent education charity, concealing material facts required on financial disclosure forms, and filing false tax returns. Now, her lawyer is trying to keep her out of jail while she goes through the uh, uh, appeals process, 
but that's not the way it works. No. Um, you know, I was uh, on the radio. I was listening to uh, our uh, your your buddies over there because I've never really Jack got and Ted. You you know Ted Jack and Ted. I don't know yeah. Jack and Ted. No, they're. Uh, I mean, they are uh, treasures. They're they're treasures to this community. I yep. mean, I mean for. Jake, Jack Harris is the voice of the tram at the airport, for God's sakes. Yeah, I want that gig one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, welcome to Tampa International Airport. Well, and there's very few people that have the historical knowledge of Tampa Bay than uh, than Ted Webb, too. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I'd like to have him on, you know, as he kind of nears his retirement. I think uh, at some point this year he, he's oh, going to... Well, I think it's like February or something like that. He's yeah, retiring. it's coming up, you know, and so, I, uh, you know, once he's done that and he's able to come over here on a, on a morning maybe uh, or remotely we'll we'll get him on the show what about jack jack's uh, gonna keep plugging away i think so man i think he's gonna keep at it you know as long as possible you know he he loves it and uh man uh, i mean he's good i mean it's just one of these guys i and if you're to... a right winger it's it's a lot easier to listen to him than if you're a little bit more on the mainstream well, or the well teddy's more to the right than jack is jack's definitely in my opinion a little bit more moderate than than ted really Wayne. oh yeah huh uh even though because of his health issues uh ted is definitely pro marijuana yes and that he sort is of thing. I've, I've heard that <laughs> I, I, I it's funny how when you you know you meet people along the way uh, how many people I've met go, you know, you'd really like Ted Webb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for that very reason. Is yeah. the reason I like Ted Webb. But anyway, I was listening to them this morning on the way in, uh, flipping around, and uh, they were talking about Corinne Brown here and how her uh, lawyer was trying to, to say, hey, we want to we want to keep her out of jail on bond until the appeals process is over. And yep. someone called us. That's that's not the way it works. Bond is to make sure you show up at your court date. That's right. But once that court date comes and you're found guilty, your march, your ass is marched right to jail and through and while your appeal process is uh, playing out. Well, and somebody reminded me when I posted a video of Corinne Brown, which I told you about. Maybe we'll play later. Yeah, um, it's federal prison. Like there's no like short time on good behavior like eighty five percent. It's uh, yeah. You have to it, serve eighty five percent, I believe, in the state uh, system here in the state of Florida. You have to serve seventy five percent. Yeah. Uh, like a mandatory, you have to serve at least seventy. And you're, if you if you're watching, thinking, wait, what, what do you mean? Has to serve seventy five? Why aren't they serving one hundred percent? Settle down, settle down. It's the way it goes. Uh, before you're eligible for any kind of uh, pro parole, I guess. Right. So seventy five percent of the state level. 85% of your term on the federal level. Yep. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday is set to hear arguments in a major case on whether certain businesses can refuse service to gay couples if they oppose same-sex marriage on religious grounds in a dispute involving a conservative Christian baker in Colorado who declined to make a wedding cake for two men. I think you guys are going to find my opinion on this surprising <laughs> because I am no longer uh, affiliated with any religion whatsoever. I have definitely had my issues with religion over the uh, years. And o although I was raised a very, you know, very much in a Christian household, uh, I mean, I thought I was going to be a minister at one point, believe wow. it or not. I actually am. I actually am ordained. Yeah, one of those online things? Yeah, Universal Church of Life. It's legit. <laughs> it's legit. I can marry you. That's I awesome. mean, I can, you know, marry you and to somebody else. Yeah, no thanks. Um, but um, but we're, we're going to come back to this, but this is something that I've wrangled with as an American for of decades. Yeah. And this is this this freedom that we have, which also means sometimes a freedom to be a jerk. Is, you know, from uh, my perspective or somebody else's perspective. So we'll come back to this in a couple minutes. And a hospital in India fired two physicians and promised an investigation after a baby who was declared dead woke up in a bag while the family was driving to the funeral. They had twins. One was stillborn. The other one died shortly later. Uh, so they were put in bags, getting ready to, you know, Jeez. to handle it. And then on the way, the bag started to move. One of the babies woke up or came to or how, however that works. Yeah. Alive, became reanimated. Uh, by the way, did you throw in your joke uh, on the Stuff You Should Owe graphic today? <laughs> well, you said you were going to name no, the story. No, I didn't. The... I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was best you didn't. Yeah, I know. It was best it was... you didn't. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, I they they're at the hospital. We are shaken and concerned at this rare incident. We are in constant touch with the parents that are providing providing all the needed support. Now, the reason that these guys are fired not only did this happen, but I guess this can happen every now and again, where yeah. somebody comes to they're dead. All signs point to dead, and then somehow the brain kicks back in and starts to get everything moving again. But um, but they also it looks like they were trying to. 
like they, their their business practices were bad here too. They were trying to extort money right like during the the emergency, right? Okay. And saying we need more money, we need more money to try to save your baby or or to save the mom or both or something along those lines. Yeah. And so it looks like they were trying to squeeze undue money out of the couple as well. Uh, then both babies don't make it. Then all of a sudden one comes back and they're in the news and they're fired. What a crazy story, by this, the way. This, our, is our, very, this is very common in second and third world countries where because I've had this happen to family members where they what? are in a hospital uh, getting treated, having surgery or something like that. And they are basically pushing you to to get more services to get more procedures or to get, you know, they're basically, they like, they know they got you, you're not going anywhere, and they're trying to milk you for every dollar. So this is a, one of the big concerns that I have when it comes to uh, the privatization, the way, uh, the, just, just letting capitalism run unfettered throughout the healthcare industry, this is why I, I that that makes me nervous because yeah. if 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 it all becomes all about money at that point, then they're then they're just going to play to our worst fears and constantly sell you procedures and things that are going to make them ten thousand dollars a pop, fifty, hundred thousand dollars a pop. Right. But in the end, they've just tricked you into something because they know that you're a, you're an ape. They know that you're a primate. You think you think that you're a god. Yeah. You think you we, we we think that we've evolved to a point where we are uh, separate from you know, other apes and other animals and that we make all, all of our own decisions. <laughs> but these people in the healthcare industry, they know better. Yeah. You can sit there. And for those people that say they have 100% free will and control over all of their uh, decisions, well, they're, you're the ones that they target the most. Well, it, it goes to show, last night is a perfect example. You know, we went to, and I'm not going to name them because, you know, they did a they did right by us last night. But we went by t- uh, to this um, music store to buy a piece of equipment that we needed here for the studio. Uh, and while we're there, mind you, this is a $100 piece of equipment. So $100 for an individual, sure, that's that's a bit of an expense. For a corporation. For a, bi- for a business, it's right. 100 bucks. I mean, even for a small business like ours. Uh, and the guy is trying to sell us on a $30 insurance plan on a $100 piece of equipment. Right. So they're trying to get you on that emotion that here's this expensive new piece of equipment I just bought, and oh, my God, if anything happens to it, uh, I'm going to regret not having gotten that insurance. Uh, but the thing is is that that guy behind the counter likely doesn't even want to do that. No, he, does, he doesn't no, even want to upsell you because in his heart it, it, it hurts him, or at least it did in the beginning. Yeah. But – but when he's in his uh, meetings every Monday morning and they're going, all right, our sales for insurance, you our sales for insurance are down. You need to plug the insurance. You need to push the insurance. Everybody pushing their insurance. All right, we got an incentive program this month. The first, the person that gets the most uh, people to buy into this bullshit, unnecessary, yep. worthless contract. Well, aren't you concerned that you know that kind of stuff may get out and that you know it hurts your business, it tarnishes your brand? No. Because every one of our competitors is doing the same thing. Yep. And if they're not, well, they're going out of business soon. Because you need to find a lot of different ways to bring in revenue, not just simple sales. So sell them on that and then try to upsell them to, you know, it's the same thing like a a server. You're going to ask for desserts. (laughs) The server, by the way, when they put on that smile and go, oh, my gosh, I love the this, this, and this. If they're being honest, it means they've only been a server for less than a year. (laughs) Uh, otherwise, they get it. And so when you go, oh, my gosh, what do you guys have today? What what about drinks? Is the, bar, the bartender something sweet? She's not She's not going to go, oh, you should try this, the cheapest thing. She's going to go, what is going to get me my most return? Well, I'm going to uh, try to upsell you on the most expensive drinks we have here and upsell you on the most expensive wine we have here and upsell you on the uh, most expensive uh, desserts that we have here. Yeah, Cords makes a good point in the comments, which is uh, the, he just reminded me, the guy last night, he says, well, if you try to fix this thing, mind you, it's a $100 piece of equipment. He goes, if you try to fix this thing, it's going to cost you $200 to fix it. <laughs> right. So, and, that, and, and then he also mentions that social media has also changed consumer awareness, you know, and so you're not, you know, uh, falling for stuff like that as much as people used to. Also, this is how a lot of uh, you know the, uh, businesses and corporations they justify what they're doing as well. Because on one hand, they'll go, uh, "Listen, we're not, uh, we're, we're we're 
they they look at it as like uh, you are looking for us anyway. You're looking, you know, to eat anyway. Mm-hmm. We just want to make sure that we're right there in front of you, and uh, you know, we want we want to help you out with that search. Here yep. we are. Come to our place and spend your money. I don't. Anyway, we're we're off we're off all kinds of topics and tangents this morning. Welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Thank you so much to all the new viewers this morning, all the new listeners this morning. Um, we do this Monday through, this is only week number four of the show and it's a uh, Monday through Friday from seven till nine. Approximately we have our, f- oh shoot, we got our first guest right now. Let me uh, fire up my uh, Facebook. <laughs> and All good right. thing too, cause he's next on our, uh, stuff you should know list. Well, I want to make sure, let's see if he's, uh, there this morning. Um, people enjoying our fancy new graphics this morning. Thank you to, uh, Jessica, one of our loyal viewers. Good morning, Jessica. All right, let's fire up Facebook and let's see if uh, Ricky is by his... Uh, Ricky! Ricky, Ricky Tan! Let's I love that here. rush hour. Uh, you, you Ricky Tan! Uh, no. how, how many times do you see that movie? Uh, probably about half a dozen times. I'm, uh, I, I've, I've always um, had an appreciation for people who can just pull quotes left and right. <laughs> oh man, I could movie trivia. Oh, I will destroy on movie trivia. Speaking of Roy it, and I have have to go toe to toe on movie trivia. All right, I uh, we, have to, we should do that next time Roy's in here. Just have some fun between you guys. Yeah. But uh, speaking of which trivia, uh, which trivia Tuesday tonight at uh, Boulevard Burgers, make sure you join me from uh, seven until well about nine tonight. Uh, seven to eight thirty is what it's supposed to go. I'm usually it's usually about eight forty five before I'm wrapping it up. I, I'm long winded when it comes uh-huh. to trivia. You know, some trivia guys, I man, they just they blow through their trivia. They're supposed to be there ninety minutes. They're there ninety minutes and they're out of there. Yeah. To me, it is a relationship and I, that I've developed or I'm developing with the people sitting in front of me. So I I don't watch the time too much. Um. Uh, well, you got to be funny and quirky, and you know you got to keep people interested. Like even uh, I was at Brew Bus earlier uh, uh, late last week, and he, he, the chick who normally does the trivia and the bingo there, uh, she does a good job, man. You know she even kind of keeps the bingo interesting. So yeah, that's that's I, I'm curious on that because trivia I feel like I get more that I'm working with. Yeah, Messenger is currently unavailable. Well, this this puts a little. Um, let's see, let's go back to Facebook. I don't know if you saw that, but I was basically trying to stall here. Yeah, you're trying to go through Facebook, so. Uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, should I close out all the windows and see if that helps me? I hate to do that, because that's all my prep for the morning. Uh, or try a different browser. Uh, bring up Safari and pull it up there. Yeah. What's wait, interesting wait. is, what happened? You oh. got a message? No, no, no. Oh. <clears throat> What's interesting is, uh, what's interesting is that you know we we were excited because of course we have the Dats family supporting our show, you know, yeah. and so we're like, oh, cool, Dats, and then it turns out we get Ricky P, which if you've lived in Tampa Bay long enough, I mean, how do you not know Ricky P is over in St. Pete, which you know I, he's now part of the Dats family, and uh, uh, so I'm I'm really excited to talk about him. I love doing this, uh, you know, kitchen food type stuff. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I'd like to connect with them via uh, Facebook. But, you know, the thing is, I know this is uh, not the best way for us to uh, introduce, but I could do it right here via speakerphone right now and just have a like a phone conversation. But what I'm doing is, is trying to see how it's. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe just cl- open a new window. I, I just tried. Or pull it man, into a new window. Tried. All right, pull it into a new window. So do that. Close this and see if that helps. Uh, um, you know, like I said, you know, this is only week number four of the new show. We're still uh, adding um, different features every single day. Uh, well, it's every couple of days. And uh, these guys here at Bake More Pies have been working hard behind the scenes. But it looks this, like, this just seems like it, it looks like it's Facebook. It's a Facebook problem. Yeah, because you know, when it went, went to Messenger.com, Messenger said Messenger's not available yeah, right it's now. Yeah, chat is currently unavailable. So Facebook's so, screwing us on this one. So we can either Skype. I, I could send him a memo link, or let, we could let's send him a memo link, uh, link and pop uh, pull up pull it up through memo cords cords yeah, maybe yeah, that we can send him a memo link. Do you want me to send it to you, or do you want me to send it to who? Go ahead, and just, just shoot it over to cords and cords and send it to him, <laughs> or you can send it to me because I'll send it to Cassie. But oh. then he would have to yeah, just send it to cords. Send it to cords and uh, and they can figure that out. Uh, we'll get them on here in a couple minutes. We can go back through some of the. Uh, 
Because in the end, man, you and I want to be able to do all this stuff through Memo Live, right? Technically, yeah. Yeah. that's the ideal way to do it. And maybe, maybe that's my fault. Maybe I shouldn't have. Because we've gotten so used to here in the beginning of uh, bringing up, uh, you know, it was working really good for us in the beginning, that Facebook Messenger. I just got excited, so that's my like go-to. But technically, because of the system that we're using, uh, the software, the hardware, everything, there is a a more uh, 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 there's a way that we should be doing this, and it's through the that software, and it's Mimo Mimo Live. So we just send a link, you uh, hit, somebody clicks on that link, and they get punched up on Johnny's end. But while he's uh, figuring that out, let's uh, talk about. Uh, well, I don't want to get to that one because I definitely want Johnny's opinion on that one. Um. Corinne Brown, we touched, you got enough for her and stuff you should know. All right, Airbnbs. Have you guys uh, uh, done, um, have, have you become uh, fans of the Airbnb when you travel? Or are you like, no, nah, 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 I'm going to a hotel. <clears throat> well, people keep finding, this is coming from uh, the New York Post. People keep finding hidden cameras in the Airbnbs, and when they do, they'll tweet about it. They'll Instagram it, Facebook it. Uh, and so here is the this Twitter post. And, oh, that's a thing now, news. A colleague of mine thought it odd that there was a single motion detector in his Airbnb bedroom. Voila, there's an IP camera connected to the web. He left it in the morning, reported it. The host was suspended. How come the host isn't arrested? That's what I want to know. Why, if if you're found doing something like this uh, right now because the laws don't haven't caught up with anything, it's like, hey, it's my private residence. I can have cameras up everywhere, anywhere that I want. Well, this is the reason that Airbnb needs to follow uh, rules like everybody else. It's a scary problem on their hands. People keep finding hitting, hidden cameras in their rental homes. Another host was busted last month trying to film guests without their knowledge, making the second time since October that the company has had to publicly deal with this sort of incident. So, you know, when this stuff this is like roaches, if this stuff is happening publicly, it's not just anomalies. You've got dozens of people who are not being caught right now. I don't think I could do it personally. I don't think I could do the Airbnb thing yet. It seems too weird. Uh, it's it, it's it would seem like I'm in somebody else's home, and that yeah. would, that automatically puts me out, puts me off. Well, and so I know somebody who has actually done Airbnb while the person who owns the home is actually there, which is even weirder to me. Yeah, that's the way a lot I of these are. I definitely couldn't do that. Oh, I guess because yeah, if, if it's just if nobody's living there, well, then it's just that you're renting somebody's house. That's no big deal. Yeah. But I've like I know a guy who actually stu- stayed at a place with a woman no. who lived by herself, no. which is just begging for all kinds of issues. Did he have his own access to the room, or do you have to walk in like you know, hey mom? It, I think it was just a room in her house. No, I don't like that at all. And then, and then you, you kind of get into this, and this is a really interesting story because you get into this weird area where he didn't have any plans for I guess one of the nights he was there, so he's just kind of hanging out. And then she's like, hey, you know, want to watch TV? So they start watching TV. And then she, like, opens a bottle of wine. No. And <laughs> it gets it, it gets real interesting real quick. Well, and, now, well, now I want to know the rest of the story. No, well, I mean, there really wasn't much else because he was like, yeah, this is, yeah, this, something's not quite right here. He just didn't have a good feeling about it. So he kind of said, no, you know what? I'm going to call it a night and, yeah. uh, and checked out. Well, but, how much was the room? <laughs> I mean, if it was like 30 bucks, I'd put up with a creepy, uh, you know, uh, a person for a couple hours. Um, so officials have been forced to ban account users in the past for deploying secret cams around their house. Would you like to guess what states they found those in? Florida. There you go, sir. Florida is one of them. Florida and California. An unidentified American archivist. Is that what that is? Became the most uh, recent victim with his co-worker, Jason Scott, tweeting out a picture on the 27th of a hidden device that they found while staying in an undisclosed Airbnb. <clears throat> uh, in response, Airbnb, Airbnb released a statement saying that they had permanently banned the homeowner and supported our guests with full refund and reimbursement for expenses incurred. Despite prior reports, a spokesperson told BuzzFeed on Monday that finding cameras in a rental home was incredibly rare. I don't care now, though. Even if it is incredibly rare, I've seen enough of these stories where there's no way. But the thing is, I guess this, something similar could happen in a hotel room and you wouldn't even know about it. Uh, you know, what's her face? I can't remember her name now. Jill Kelly. Is that her name? Uh, from ESPN that uh, had somebody videotape her. was no, following it was uh, Aaron horse. Andrews. Aaron Andrews. Thank yeah. you. I don't know how I didn't I remember that. Didn't Who, who the hell's Jill Kelly? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up as I go. 
Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Facebook.com slash the wake dot show. We really appreciate all the likes and the interaction, the comments. We'll get to that here in a second. We're uh, uh, going to uh, punch up, punch in, pipe in uh, a new sponsor, a partner with the wake dot show that we're very excited about coming up in just a few. Um, hit a couple of things. Uh, did you watch SNL at all this weekend? No, I it's. So no, it's not on your radar. I'm in this weird thing right now where ever since I moved, uh, I don't have internet or cable at my house. That, yes, yes, I do. Uh, was it Fisher the Man that I st- set it up as? I think so. Let me pull up my Skype. Yeah, Fisher the Man. Good morning to Chris Brown, our buddy David Capote. All checking in this morning. I want to make sure that's who I am, Fisher the Man. That is who you are. That's me. Big I boy. found me. <laughs> uh, so SNL over there, we were just his last night, uh, you know, doing this new show now and getting up at O Dark 30 in the morning again, uh, not staying up on Sunday nights to watch The Walking Dead live. And so it makes me nervous that there's going to be spoilers. And we, so my wife and I fired up on Monday nights. We we're so tired last night that we we're like, let's just put on the SNL from Saturday, watch it until we fall asleep, which is usually right around, uh, you know, the week. As long as like if I can make it to weekend update, then I feel pretty good. Sure. Uh, but they had a bit called the... Uh, uh, Florida Bama Shore or something like that. And I thought that it was just a crack on, you know, Florida and that show that came out of Siesta Key with a that rich rich guy paid to have his kids on television or whatever the hell that reality show was. Yeah. And uh and so it is just nothing but redneck stereo you know, Florida stereotype, but not even redneck. I mean Florida stere- stereotype after Florida stereotype, right? Well then uh, this morning I'm uh I'm flipping around uh, the news, and I see SNL takes on Flora Bama Shore and Hurricane Ir- Irma. I'm like, what? Oh, you mean that they were actually, there's actually a show called Flora Bama Shore. Yes. That's on television, and they were it making is. fun of that show, not just of all the stereotypes of us here in the oh. state of Florida. Oh, no. But the entire show. Yes. Or, I mean, there, there, there's an actual show. Yeah, it's so now Florida I don't Bama know- Shore. It's a spinoff of Jersey Shore. Right. Except that they've taken, the, I'm assuming, the worst of the worst here in the state of Florida, the same way that they did there in Tom Rivers or Which Tom's I'm, River. I'm shocked that it took them, I mean, God, what's it been? Six years since Jersey Shore did I'm sure it's make been the spinoff? I'm sure it's been in, a work, in the works. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, still, if you think about it, it's been a long time for them to put this spinoff on the air. Yeah. Also, if uh, he can't find me, I can always uh, punch him up here. I can uh, track him down myself, Gorge. Yeah, but the reality show Floor Bama Shore recently premiered on MTV, putting Florida stereotypes. Or try the Facebook thing again. I, I'm seeing a little movement through the. Even if you punch them up, you might still be able to send them a video message. So. <clears throat> um. All right. Sorry, so Facebook kind of threw us a curveball here this morning. It's all right. Wait, it's all right. We're uh we're we're learning new new ways to do stuff uh, every single day as we go. Um, so I'll bring him back up. Let's see if Messenger pops up. Uh, looks like I'm still having mess- or issues with Messenger. I think you might have too much stuff open. I think it's probably... All right. Do I get a... What's his name? Uh, Ricky. Ricky P. Ricky P. Parsons. E-Y? Uh, I think it was just Y. So, oh, that's hilarious! When I'm sitting there uh, giving my phone number to everybody in the world. Well, I didn't have uh, I don't have it up that close. Oh, okay, good. <clears throat> All right, that's. Oh, here we go. The Mimo Live. No, Facebook. It's popping up for you. Yeah, let me try, because I can always bring him on. Oh, it says unavailable for video calling. All right, let's kind of right. keep going, or or let's try to punch him up on Skype, or yeah, if you want, give me his info, or I've got it right now. Stand by. all right, and then I'll punch him up on uh, Skype. Hello to Mariella, good friend of mine from uh, high school, and uh, tuning in all the way from Japan, I believe. Oh wow, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Kanichiwa. Her, uh, her her 
her, I think it's her husband, got some kind of job out there, and they said, hey, let's do it. Speaking of rush hour, I, that's that's where I learned uh, that <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's what took you to learn Konnichiwa? Yeah. Well, do, do you remember at the end of rush hour, and at the, as the trailers ran, they did uh, outtakes, and it took forever for him to get, get down. When they were on the plane, that last scene, Yeah. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, it took him forever to, like, to get Konnichiwa and whatever that line was down, and so that's why it stuck in my head. Why else would I know that? I'm a redneck from Okoe, Florida. Why, why else would I know Japanese before my adulthood? I don't know. <laughs> we weren't traveling the world. We are going to a farm every summer for a vacation. Um, all right, so, yeah, I'm not having any uh, luck there with Messenger. We've got uh, my uh, Skype cup. Uh, all right, we'll uh, come back to that here in a couple minutes. All right, so... <clears throat> Uh, I, I want can I, I want your attention on this one, Johnny, because I'm, I, I'm assuming you have as a as a pol, you know a Republican and a future president of the United States or a future <laughs> a legislator here in the state of Florida. I don't know what your ambitions are, but this uh, religious liberty or right to discriminate. I think this is a very fascinating lawsuit coming out of Colorado. Yep. And this goes back a couple of years. This was 2012 when uh, Charlie Craig and David Mullins, no, those aren't uh, two guys from U2, uh, uh, a man and a man that were uh, very uh, happy and wanted to get, they were getting married. And so they walk into a bakery, not thinking much of it. And uh, they had a, a book ready to go, had all these uh, ideas ready to go yep. and said, hey, uh, can, you, uh, can you make us a cake? And the guy said, no, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, make a cake. I'm a Christian and uh this goes against what I believe, right? And uh, so I can, in good conscience, make you a cake. Well, they were obviously very embarrassed and insulted, and I uh, walked away and uh, eventually went f. This is this is discrimination. This is BS. Sure, and uh, got lawyers involved. So now this has been running through the courts over the last few years, and uh, is on its way to, or is it in the Supreme Court right now? I think it already is. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's had a hearing yet. Okay. Um, and so this is something that's kind of been in my, that I haven't been able to come up with an answer for or reconcile going back to my early, like the nineties, early nineties. And that is that, that freedom, that freedom to be free and make your choices, even if they're not the, the ones that I want you to make or mm -hmm. somebody else wants you to make. Yeah. Uh, maybe in this moment. So I, I look at this guy because I, again, I come from, I have a religious background, but I am not a religious, I I'm not part of any religion right now, and uh, nor can I ever see myself going back into that, uh, the, the institutionalizing my spirituality, institutionalizing God. I, that, doesn't, that doesn't work for me. S that being said, okay, I still have a certain amount of respect for all of those people who are religious. And, and so I'm wondering, is America a place where you can come, have those freedoms, even if you're being a jerk to somebody else and just let things play out. Um, it's, it's tough. So I saw this come up in my newsfeed last night, but as a video. And the video was advocating for against the baker. Um, and, and they made a valid point, which is that in this particular case, where they were originally making a religious argument for it, it seems like they're now trying to make a First Amendment case for it under creativity, under art, artistry, uh, so a freedom of speech argument in addition to freedom of religion. Uh, and I agree with you. I'm torn on the issue because... You are torn. As a Republican, you're torn. Yeah, because the lady in the video made a good point, which is that there's very little... There, there's very few shades of difference between discrimination by uh, for religious reasons and then discrimination by race, right? So you could easily... Right, because what if somebody says, well, my, in my religion, they go to the Bible and they pull out one, that one line that, you know, the Klan likes to use to whatever. I can't I don't remember what that verse is. Yep. But uh, they go, see, right here, right here, you know, this says this, this is my religion. I, I think that uh, black people are an abomination and I don't want to serve black people. 
Right. So that's, yeah, where do you draw the line? Well, ex- and they'll hide behind it, right? So even if you were to make that delineation where, uh, okay, if it's uh, because of religious reasons, then it's okay, then people are going to hide behind religious reasons. Forever. Even if, sure, yeah, absolutely. They'll just abuse that delineation. But but should we should we say, okay, let, let them? Because I now we so. have the internet now. Uh, we- honestly, I think if I were to, to, to step back and I would say, you know what? Let that business take that risk. If that business wants to be known as a bigoted business, sure. If they want to be racist, if they want to be homophobes, if they want to be, let them. Because we have the internet now. We can we can do things as citizens to make their uh, uh, make them very uncomfortable and force them to change their ways or force them out of business. Yeah, exactly. And so. I don't know that using the courts is the right way to go about it, but the other bakery case, you know, same situation, gay couple, Christian bakers uh, have now gone out of business. They, they, they're, you know, piled up on legal bills and all this stuff because of this case. Uh, I don't know that that's the right way to go about it, but I certainly think that, uh, again, this is kind of where capitalism comes into play. And do you let it play out, right? Do you let it run its course i guess the fear is that if you let it run its course that there's that there's so much bigotry out there that it would turn into something that we don't want but on the other hand i don't know that that's the case i think that there i think those ties are easily changed yes of of course there's a lot of prejudice out there and and bigotry and ignorance but you know what i think when when both sides push back i think that uh when both sides push back i think eventually you re- reach a point of acceptance. I mean, you remember when, you know, Chick-fil-A had the issue because they didn't want to donate to LGBT groups or whatever the, you know, however that came about. And all of a sudden Chick-fil-A was an evil corporation because uh, they weren't supportive of LGBT rights or something like that. You know, and I mean, honestly, there's still not a fast food restaurant that I have to wait at longer than Chick-fil-A. Right. And, and that's the thing, too, because we, you know, uh, it would be a battle of ideas because that Christian bakery, if they're allowed to whatever. And we and there's people like me going, uh, don't go to them. They're bigots. Uh, they, you know, uh, da, 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 da. You, have, you have those people protesting. But on the other side, you're going to have uh, those in the Christian community going. Uh, they're going to be supporting them and, te- you know, tenfold. So there will be that the, that battle of ideas moving forward. Uh, because I don't want to live in an America that promotes bigotry and prejudices. Right. People are yep. like, no, hold on, it's my religious belief, religious beliefs. Well, you know what? The In every single one of these religions, these major religions, there's a lot of texts that go along, and people pull out what they want to do what they want. Yep. They pull out one line here, one line there. <clears throat> I'm trying to look him up. Chick-fil-A, trying to connect to him. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 that's okay. I'm trying to, trying to figure this bad boy out. On uh, why it's not. Because of the <sighs> ah, sorry about this, guys. I'm sorry about this uh, little technical thing here. Um, so try to add him here. Of course, a day after we invite uh, you know 500 new people to the show. Um, well. Again, he must have settings or something on his Facebook to prevent from video calls because when I tried to call him... Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I got a couple of, couple of them. See, like, he doesn't have his video option on. He doesn't... He, he would need to have his... Through Facebook anyways. Yeah, I don't know which one he is. I guess his email address would probably be the best to try to track him down, uh, since just his name. All right, cool. All right, now, uh, now, Johnny, and for those of you that are commenting, because this is a, I'm going to take this to an extreme. Okay, I'm going to take this freedom uh, to be. I'm going to say, and I, and I and I apologize. This is going to be offensive to the religious people that are watching. Um, uh, but basically, the freedom to be a dick, freedom to be a jerk. Freedom to worship and live your life the way that you want to, as long as obviously it doesn't impose on other people. We got to find, you know, draw some lines there. But there's a more extreme example 
of this that swirls around in my head, and that is those times when a when parents will not give medical care to their child because they don't believe in it. A kid has cancer, very treatable cancer, and all they have to do is uh, you know put them through this process and things are going to work out just fine. But they say, no, we don't believe in that. Uh, in our religion, uh, we're going to pray, and if it's God's will, that our child will live. If not, then our t- child will die, and we're okay with that. Yeah. So we uh, have stepped in historically and said, no, 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 you're not gonna, you're not gonna do that. Uh, sorry, your religion's fine until it, it affects somebody else. But it's their kid, and so I've never come down one on one side or the other because I can see this thing both ways. On one hand, like, no, we're not gonna, we're gonna let you, you're crazy. Um, you know, uh, affect a child. That's where we draw the line. Courts, why don't you just sit there and can you look that up for him, please? Just so, because, I, yeah, I just, you know, it just looks that bad that we keep stopping the show to kind of figure this out. And yeah, go ahead. Um, so, so that's just the, come around the side courts. That's kind of more the the extreme example that I'm talking about that I've never, you know, come down on one side or the other. On one hand, we go, no, no, no. As a society, as America, we're not allowing that. We're, we're going to take care of the child. We're going to take the child away from you. You guys can practice whatever you want. But on the other hand, I go, I, there's a part of me that goes, man, we should let these, you know, there's there's all kinds of religious folk here. Mm-hmm. And uh, people come to America. I mean, this is this is our history of coming here so they're not persecuted. So they can, whatever crazy shit. You know, to a certain degree, where you're 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 allowed to do, and yeah. where we're not going to step in, and so that's. I, well, I mean, there's there's moderate levels of this already, and so restaurants are able to dictate if you're not wearing shirt or shoes, then you can't come into my restaurant. Okay. Or if you're not dressed a certain way, if you're not wearing a blazer, so you're discriminating against and, and, poor poor people or whatever that don't can't afford shoes and shirts. Well, no, but or whatever. Yeah, you could see it that way. Or if or if, uh, you know, if it's a fancy restaurant and maybe I don't own a nice pair of pants, you know, well, they you're not right going to let me in because I'm not wearing jeans. I mean, because I'm wearing jeans and I'm not wearing dress pants or because I don't own a blazer. You know, so they're these are and they sound like ridiculous examples, but they're very small. They're microaggressions, to use a liberal term. You know, these are the, so there's already some of this out there. And I think what bothers people on the right side of the aisle is the fact that if it were reversed, right, it doesn't get the anger and the frustration that uh, that that you typically see. So if if they're well, what 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 do you mean if it was reversed? So if it's reversed, right? So if you're discriminating, let's say against Christians, or you're discriminating against, can you give uh, me an example where that would happen, or just kind of a scenario so I can visualize this? Uh, there's organizations that discriminate constantly. I mean, you you look at you know there's organizations that don't allow you know for women, for example, that don't allow you know that uh, Augusta National, you know the court sitting right there, we you know came from Augusta. I mean, you know, it wasn't until recently that women were even allowed to be members, you know, and so there are uh, there's bike clubs. You know that have unwritten policies against uh, people of certain races. There's already an element of this out there. I, it's just very discreet. So, how much do we step in as a society, as you know, as as America, and get our legislators involved with this kind of stuff versus let this play, let these freedoms play out? Um, we're we're if you're we're, you're it, this isn't the United States of uh, prejudice free America. Yeah. You know, we're human beings. You know, we are we're apes that are evolving, and we still have some issues. So do we let this? Do we do we step in and and put in these safeguards, laws, and say no? Uh, we're not going to have a country like this if you are going. You know, you're not going to serve people because they're gay or they're black or women. Um, or do we go listen? You guys knock yourselves out, but uh, it's not going to work. And then have faith in humanity. Yeah. Have faith in the rest of us that these these businesses that try to become a whites only or a blacks only, yeah. or that there there'll be enough pressure where they either change their ways or they go out of business. Now, see, to play devil's advocate is where does this stop? Does that mean that now you are allowed to discriminate from hiring 
uh, LGBT uh, people of the LGBT community? Does this mean that you are allowed to uh, not hire black people or Hispanic people? Or you know, at what point do you draw the line? See, uh, this is why I can't. I can't. I've never been able to fall down on one side of this issue or another. I think the government does have to come down one way or the other, uh, and and I think more than likely it'll be that uh, that. T- racism discrimination of any kind will not be tolerated and if you're a business owner that is going to become law just like the ada just like all the other discrimination laws that are out there and that if you are a business owner then you need to abide by these non-discrimination laws that are in place and if you know if you're you're christian and you're watching you're thinking this is bs this is uh this is just another example of uh, an attack on the war on Christianity and so on and so forth. It's not, it's not, um, it, this is about how we want to interact with each other here in our country, in America. And, um, if you're getting angry at me and my stance, I understand because I'm angry at you and your stance because, uh, you know, when we bring up these talk, it's like John just did, he, Johnny just did. He goes to the other side of the aisle and says there's hypocrisy because if it were switched around, da, 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 da. and so that's one of the things that uh, bothers me because are they, they're, they're using the Bible, like Johnny was saying, hiding behind a couple of lines in the Bible to not cook a cake for two men that were getting married. But, no, let me just say, I don't, I don't know. Have, do this, does this couple ask everybody coming in that is getting married whether or not they've been married before? Are they divorced? Are they are they applying to the same thing to all the other sinners out there? So every other line, are they applying? No, no, it just ends up being for gay couples. So it becomes a different issue. It's not about religion. It's about you. It's about something else. All right, enough of that controversy. Finally, we well, get... Well, real quick, so just to wrap that up, but David uh, chimes in here at the last second. He says when he was uh, younger, businesses had us uh, typically had signs saying that they had to write the right to refuse service to anyone. Right. Obviously, I don't think that carries any legal weight. Uh, but, but again, I think that was at a time where people could openly discriminate, and nobody was really going to take a lot of issue with it. Right. Now we bring in uh, via Skype Tony P. How are you, Tony P? Ricky. I'm sorry, Ricky P. I'm sorry, Ricky P. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that, Ricky. How are you, sir? I'm great. great. Oh, good. Wonderful. Well, good. It's finally, uh, it's good to have you on. Where are you this morning? Um, I'm sitting uh, in the uh, the bar area at uh, Rue at uh, 4205 uh, South McDill. Uh, well, we're very excited to introduce you to uh, our our viewers here here at the Wake Dot Show, and I bring you in bring you in as our first uh, uh, sponsor, our first partnership. And so I uh, was talk we were talking about how we want to do this, and <laughs> it all disappeared. You still there? <laughs> yeah. All right, I can still hear him then. Um, we were talking about uh, how we want to uh, bring you in the shows, and incorporate you into uh, what we're doing here, and uh, one of the, you're our first client, you're our first partner. So I wanted to get you guys on the air and just say hello, introduce myself and Johnny, if you don't know Johnny, and uh, get to know more about you guys and Rue, because hopefully this is something that lasts a, a very long time for us. So now when I first brought you up this morning, Ricky P, uh, Johnny goes, is that the same Ricky P uh, from uh, uh, so Cajun restaurants here in town? And so you, yep. you've got a history in this That's town neat. yourself. So let's talk about your CVs and uh, where you trained and, and the cooking you've done over your life. Okay. Well, I, um, I, I grew up and so just by that itself gives you a uh, uh, sort of a, an understanding of, of a relationship to, to this food. My mother is full, full-blooded Cajun lady out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. And so uh, having a Cajun mother and New Orleans cooking, which is basically Creole, um, and working my way through school as a, as a sandwich maker and a cook in local restaurants, I had an affinity for this, uh, this type of uh, cooking and, and, and have a passion for it. Uh, but I actually spent 30 years in the broadcast industry. I was, uh, Did you? I, I got into the advertising side of the radio business and uh, made, a, made a good career. I, I, I was recruited to, to be the, the general sales manager at a local rock station back in the eighties and uh, here in town. Yeah, Here's oh yeah, ninety the old ninety five F. What ninety five? What you were my, at? Uh, you were at the historic uh, my, ninety five Y and F. I'm sorry. Say again. You were at the historic 
uh, YNF, 95 YNF back in the day. Yeah, yeah, no I was kidding. part of that uh, that crew that uh, uh, when, when CBS bought us in uh, 1985, at that particular point, it turned the market upside down with, if you're stickers putting uh, down, uh, am I still with you? Yeah, yeah, we're still here. Yeah, too, the connection's okay. a little uh, spotty, but we're getting there. Yeah, I'm. But it was, uh, it was a, it, you know, just a, a, an interesting time in my life. But, uh, for the next thirty years, I've been in this market thirty-four years now. But ten years ago, my wife and I started. Uh, we decided to create a second career, and we opened up Ricky over in uh, Saint Petersburg. And I wanted to start an authentic New Orleans representation of the classic po' boy sandwich. And uh, other, we opened up a full service restaurant in downtown, and it was quite popular. And because of all the hustle and bustle in the downtown area, we got squeezed out uh, on the rent and uh. ended up on Fourth Street again. And unfortunately, that wasn't the right location for us. So uh, I contacted the Perrys, Roger and Suzanne, and said, I love L- Louisiana cooking and I love Rue. It's a great uh, Louisiana representation. You have a spot for someone with. With my uh, with my background, and so we collaborated to create uh, a, a lunch menu that uh, features primarily the the po' boys that uh, I'm so in love with. Yeah, and Rue has been around for uh, some time, but you guys just started serving lunch here in the last couple of months, right? Correct, correct. Uh, Rue started in uh, 2014, I believe, and so um, and and it's a fabulous restaurant. It gets great reviews on on all of the uh, trip advisors and. And Google and and uh, we just got uh, uh, reviewed by USA Today and we're one of the top ten restaurants in Tampa. Nice, so, congratulations! Uh, yeah, they're doing things the right way. They they have a commitment to you know putting the uh, the love and the attention into the preparation of the food that uh, I'm very familiar with coming from Louisiana. And so they weren't open for lunch though, and so they they thought that the 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 right way to bring me into the mix, so to speak, was to reintroduce, because they did have lunch when they first opened, but they backed away from it. So we've reintroduced lunch as of November 1st, and um, it's starting to take, starting to really uh, pick up some speed. Um, now, okay, let's talk about Po' Boys real quickly, because uh, I was just in New Orleans okay. uh, this past week, this past uh, year for a wedding. And uh, had a so I had my fair share of you know Cajun food balls there, and the po boys that I got came with gravy. Yeah. Um, but I when I order a po po boy here in Tampa, and I say with gravy, they look at me like I'm a moron and go, "Well, we have we have a sauce that comes with it, but it's not a gravy." Uh, what's it mean when you get a po boy with gravy in Louisiana? Well, the number one. Uh uh, po boy in in New Orleans is a uh, roast beef. It's a sliced roast beef, and it's simmering in uh, a very savory roux based uh, brown gravy. Mm. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's oh. a roast beef. And the whole concept is is that you take this eye of the round and um, you slice it very thin, and you put it in this gravy, and then you take the, the sandwich, you cut cut the bread open. One side has mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, and pickle. We call that dressed. You get your poor boy dressed or undressed. And then on the other side, you stack the, the meat. And, and there's no portion control in this concept. It's taking, taking the gravy with some, some tongs and putting it on the bread. And the gravy's dripping all over the place. And then you cut it in half and you, you send it out with six or seven napkins because you're going to need them. That's delicious. And that's 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 what makes it a that's what makes it so flipping delicious. Is it's just it's just you know uh, think of Sunday at your mama's house with roast beef and gravy and mashed potatoes and put it all on a sandwich. The, although the potatoes are on the side is in the form of French fries, which are not pretty bad with with uh, the roast beef gravy over the top of them. Mm. But uh, it's it's just it's decadent. It's uh, it, you should you should be you should take it home. And take all your clothes off and eat it in the shower, so you can just take a shower afterwards, and not to worry about all this stuff running down your arms and over your chest and everything. So, it's a uh, it's that kind of sandwich. 
uh, on uh, on the Wake Dot Show today, Ricky P from uh, Rue, and uh, it's it's interesting because when you first started talking, and you're from you're from you know the swamps of Louisiana, I'm like that does not right. sound. I do not you I do not hear an accent there. But then you say you 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 made your way into broadcast for a little while. So were you like me? Because I'm from a little redneck town here in Florida. It called Oco. Uh-huh. And there was a time in my early teens where I realized uh, I don't know what it was. Something was in my head that I needed to start paying attention more to my speech because I wanted to be successful one day. And I felt like if I were speaking like the people around me, that wasn't going to happen. Well, it's it, it, the, the one thing that's sort of a misunderstanding about New Orleans is that it's not a traditional Louisiana Southern town like you see in swamp people or on the movies. It really is a cosmopolitan city. It's a port city. So you have English and French and Spanish and Irish and German and all of these dialects that are coming together. And the true New Orleans dialect is almost like a Bronx. It's like, hey, Annie, let's go over to Lyouz's and let's get some Mercer's and then we'll go over to Darlene's and we'll see if she's call and then we'll go out to the lakefront and we'll make out all night. So that's really <laughs> what a New Orleans accent is. That's great. Now, where I, what, what happened to me is the same thing that happened to you. When I was in high school, I had a real uh, uh, affinity I, I i was part of i was a baseball player and a and a football player but i also had an affinity for for theater and i wanted to uh spend some time in that and so the drama teacher actually took me under his wing and i got involved with extemporaneous speaking and some some uh, speech tournaments and things like that so i started developing uh an affinity for uh the way that i talk and and so forth so i i, I kind of trained myself away from the casual uh, dialects that that can occur in the in the deep south. So, so now, so now people peg you for Midwest. More more often than not, you know, and and there are things, you know, I still drop my G's. I'm drinking and fishing and swimming and hunting and I can't you know, it. I don't, you know, I got to be careful to put the, you know, the swimming and drinking, you know, to put the G's on it. But uh, it's uh, it's fun. And, and and again, there's a stereotypical way that New Orleans people talk. That uh, you know is misrepresented in the movies ninety nine percent of the time. So, hey. but my Cajun my Cajun uh, family, you know, it's like, uh, hey Ricky P, what your ass do I say? Come on, Sama, try. It's uh, it's 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 actually kind of funny because my cousins who I absolutely love, their last name is Grandier, um, they do sound like the guys on Swamp. Swamp oh yeah, people, I've, I've got a know? brother who sounds like the guys on Swamp Thing too, and he's not even from from there. Johnny's got a question for you. Hey, Chef. Uh, so uh, you, I don't want to make assumptions because we're obviously, but uh, you know, whether you're in Louisiana or you're here in the Tampa Bay area, we're on the Gulf Coast. Uh, are there any challenges, right, to meet an authentic New Orleans menu, uh, you know, a Cajun menu, uh, being you know, again, that we are uh, quite separated, but still on the yeah. Gulf Coast. Well, you know, the, um, uh, there's an amazing company called Cisco. Uh, Cisco <laughs> Foods. It's funny, that brother and, I was talking about works for them. Well, and, and, and they are uh, aware of the, the popularity of, uh, of type of cuisine. So one of the big things that happens is can you get the authentic andouille sausage that uh, is in a lot of the dishes that are from Louisiana? Can you get the right bread, you know? the French bread that comes out of New Orleans. Can you get the right spices? And, you know, and I've got contacts back in New Orleans that, you know, when it's crawfish season, which comes up right after the first of the year, I can fly in crawfish on Southwest Airlines and their, and their baggage, and it goes right to the airport, and I'm picking up, you know, 200 pounds of live oh, crawfish wow. that were swimming in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the swamps and in the, in the bayous two days ago and, and boil them right here and in Tampa Bay. So, you know, the, the world is our oyster now, you know, when it comes to getting these products and, um, and we get oysters from Louisiana too. And so it really, um, the whole, the whole popularity of New Orleans and Louisiana cooking that it's become, you know, top of mind awareness. And a lot of the people that are interested in food and ethnic foods, especially, um, we can get those products pretty 
Uh, well, uh, Ricky P., we appreciate you coming on the uh, air with us today. Before we get you off, because you guys have a new lunch menu there at Rue, which is uh, located on McDill, yes. not only do you have those big, hearty uh, po' boys, but you have some lighter fare on the menu as well. Oh, sure. We've got, the, we've got some amazing salads. Uh, we have this um, uh, rotisserie chicken salad that we actually uh, uh, have a rotisserie here at the restaurant, and we uh, season it up uh, very nicely. Then we, we, we strip it. We basically, instead of cutting the, the chicken, we actually pull it apart and mix it with... Um, um, with Gravy? <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we season it and, uh, and cre- you know, with, uh, with some apple. We also put apples and, and grapes in there, and then we put it into a, uh, a bed of romaine lettuce and with a, a drizzle of our, our own house, uh, sort of a Cajun ranch dressing. And it's delicious. And then we have the traditionals, you know, the uh, the jambalaya and the gumbos and the crawfish etouffee and, and things like that. So um, it's a great, great place for lunch. And if you, you know, if you're busy and you can't get over here, you know, we've got Uber uh, you know, delivering. Uber Eats uh, is uh, and Amazon actually are delivering for us. So um, you don't worry about getting here we'll get to you all right and, do, and lastly do you have beignets i guess that's a well not yet okay because i know um, that's a fryer because that's a different that's a different piece of equipment if you're going to bring that into the uh you know well here's we've got the fryers but what you need is you need a dedicated fryer because you don't want to be frying beignets in the same fry oil that you're doing chicken or our oysters or fish in so what you really need to do is is do that and we're in the process of, of working those things out. I've got a really good recipe that um, that we had over at the other restaurant, at my restaurant, that I uh, haven't introduced it yet here, but it's in the works. It's coming. Well, thank you so much for being on the air with us today at the uh, Wake Dot Show. Make sure you check out Rue. They are open for business now at 11 a.m., 11 to 2 for lunch, and then 4 to 10. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, and that is located on McDill, South McDill. Uh, we will talk to you soon, have you into the studio, hopefully here by the end of the week. That's great. Start. Love Thank you. you. All right. Take okay. care. All right. There we go. We made it. We made uh, it, Johnny. We made it. We made it. We made it. It was worth it. It was worth it in the end. A little bit of trouble, but we yeah. made it happen, and uh, it was definitely worth it. Uh, I, I, I'm fascinated by that stuff. I'm one of those people that I may never cook any of it, but I'll sit there and watch the Food Network for hours, and uh, and and just the whole process. Uh, n- not only to cook something, but to also the the artistry behind it also fascinates me. Uh, was that if you had to do over again, would you go to culinary school? Yeah, you know, I've actually thought about going, but I'm too picky of a eater to be a chef. So I think I would actually go uh, and be a baker instead. I think mm-hmm. uh, it would be my thing. All right, so I pulled up my history to see if it saved everything, and it looks like let's see, I think it saved uh, all our stuff. Yeah, I gotta well, be careful. I'm, sh- I'm going to scroll through my search, search history. You guys going to find out what I'm searching? <laughs> well, I- and again, thanks to uh, to Rue for joining us. Uh, for those of you uh, who are interested in visiting Rue for lunch, now that they're open, uh, you can go to RueTampa.com. That's R O U X Tampa.com, and uh, their address forty two zero five South McDill Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Uh, you can also give them a call eight one three four four three five two five five eight one three four four three five two five five have you tried uber eats or any of those yet uh no i haven't uh the the first time i really saw it in uh you know in action yep i was standing in line for a concert okay and somebody ordered food to the line nice yeah so that's baller yeah that's bad (laughs) well i told you what you know what we did at a friend of mine's wedding which is we had liquor delivered to the venue because it was a beer and wine wedding and who drinks just beer and wine at a wedding? Uh, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> so we had to uh, bring in some of our own libations, and luckily there is now a delivery service for that. I was talking to uh, uh, the people out at Mastery's, Mastery's Brewing in St. Pete. They've got a couple of uh, breweries now. That's right. You're starting uh, your trivia night there. And so that's going to be at the one out of the beach, out of St. Pete Beach. Yeah. And they were talking about the trivia night that they had there. You know, they weren't happy with whatever, whatever. But they were talking about this guy they have to talk to because – and. You know, there's a lot of people that don't drink beer and wine, period. They just yep. don't like beer and wine. Right. If they're going to drink, they're drinking Oh, liquor. I'm one of those guys. I, I would not go to World of Beer because they didn't have a full bar. Right. Until now, they have full bar, full menu. 
And I and I'm I used to it depends. It depends on what mood I'm in. Uh, because but if, if I'm, I'm I'm looking to get uh, you know to turn it on get it turned up, <laughs> then yeah, it's not beer that I'm going after. You know, I'm going to go yeah. right to the uh, liquor and the caffeine. Give me sure. you know Jack and Diet Coke or you know some rum and diet you know Coke something like that. Now on the Uber Eats thing, what's interesting is because I told you I've experimented with driving for Uber and that sort of thing. So when Uber Eats first rolled out here in Tampa, I actually signed up to test it out. I wanted to see what it was like. So I've actually driven, I did maybe two or three deliveries of Uber Eats. Uh, and that was really interesting because it was, I think it was like the week or the second week after it rolled out. No lie, there was a guy who ordered a Cuban sandwich. Now, again, if you go to any respectable restaurant with a good Cuban uh, sandwich, it's going to cost you maybe about five to seven bucks. Right. Like that should be you shouldn't be paying any more than that for a Cuban sandwich. Right. He ordered it from La Segunda Bakery in Ybor City. And this guy worked in on like deep Hillsborough Avenue, like over like past the airport. OK. I can guarantee you that the delivery was probably twice the amount of the actual sandwich. Yeah. Which makes no sense to me. Uh, I guess if you've got the money and uh, you're willing to pay for that kind of uh, convenience. I mean, that's, a, that's a craving right there. That is a craving. I've had that crave, those kind of cravings before. <laughs> All right, I'd pay a, pay double, triple to get in order to uh, satiate that need. Yeah. One of those cravings was yesterday, but I wasn't able to do that. I had to actually go to the store. Why? Money. <laughs> it was no, normally our pizza is a pizza Friday, you know. Okay. Date night for my wife and I. Where do you get your pizza? We make it at home. Oh, I, get, cool. I get the dough okay. from uh, Publix. You yep. know, they'll have it already kind of half- they got the ball. You can get at the ball and do the old roll it out yourself. But I, I don't. Know, I don't have the roller, the roller yeah. rolling pin or whatever yep. they call that. Uh, so you, they do do it. It's already kind of flattened out a little bit. They get it started for you basically. Sure. Fold it over in some wax paper, and then you you know you take care of it from there. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So that's what. But for whatever reason, we both haven't had pizza in a few weeks. We haven't tried it out at the new house, and we were both craving it yesterday. And I was craving a real pizza. Because in all due respect to the pizzas that I make, they get the job done. Yeah. But they're not the same. No. Uh, I don't have the pizza stone. I don't have any of that kind of stuff. So I use the, I think they call it air bake. It's a little thin, uh, you know, metal sheet that has holes in it. Okay. Uh, and it, like I said, it gets the job done. And some will say pizza is pizza. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely not great pizza. Oh, there is great pizza. And last night, I wanted, because they were, we keep hearing there's a, you know, in the new neighborhood that we're in, yep. uh, there is a pizza joint that we have to try that it has great pizza. So I was trying to talk the wife into uh, that last night, but there was a difference between, what, uh, like $2 or less than $2 for the dough, and we already had all the other ingredients at home, yeah. or spending $20 to go get a pizza somewhere else. So sure, yeah. money, money won out last night. Well, but see, that's why I love the places like West Shore, Eddie and Sam's, West Shore Pizza is all right, you know, but Eddie and Sam's downtown, man. Ooh, that's the spot. Two New York slices and a drink for six bucks. You can't beat that. Yeah, those. I mean, I, I don't know what it is about those uh, New York slices versus other slices, but the New York, the deli slices, or I don't know. That's not deli, is it? Pizza, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. They're big and yeah, they're New York some, slices. There's just something perfect about Greasy. it. Greasy. Uh, Tour de Pizza. Have you had Tour de Pizza in uh, St. Pete? No. That's a great one, too. And uh, mm. Matt, Matt, the owner there, would make this. Uh, I don't know if they still do it or not. I think it's special order. A buffalo chicken pizza. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, so so Eddie and Sam's does a lot of those specialty pizzas. So they'll do buffalo chicken. They'll do chicken parm. They'll do, you know, that kind of thing. It's 8, 820 in the morning, and I'm already ready for lunch. <laughs> it's not even, we're not even through breakfast time yet, and I'm already ready for lunch. All right, well, uh, let's go through. Um, we, we, we took care of that. What I'm doing now, because here's what I did, because I was concerned that maybe all my stuff open was hurting that Skype Skype call, you know, and the Wi-Fi, uh, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. So it seems I, like he was on Wi-Fi, so that might have been the issue. Yeah, and you know, we want to make sure that obviously we we find the best way to do this kind of stuff. You know, right. that's that's a new partner. We want to make sure that they're happy. Yeah. You know, coming in, uh, and so it sucks is because here in the you know these these first you know week or two of test shows. Seemed like every time we used Messenger, it worked perfectly, but obviously that is not as reliable as uh, we were hoping it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, Skype, whatever issue we're having with uh, Skype, um, you know, has its issues as well. 
But let's talk about. Uh, we'll get it figured out for the next one. But you know, we we ended up figuring it out and had a great interview there for a first run with uh, Chef Ricky. Man, that's now, that's the. I'm still blown away by the, the. That's the Ricky P. That's you know. I mean, I've eaten there a number of times. I mean, I, I was part of an organization. He used to have meetings at his place upstairs, and you know, it's sad because kind of what we were talking about Seminole Heights. You know, when the serial killer was still out there, was the gentrification right and so that whole street is now amazing it's got all these incredible restaurants where his old restaurant was are you talking about rue and mcdill no no where his old restaurant was and now there's all these great restaurants and bars and all that stuff and you know you would hope that a restaurant like that would just get grandfathered in but i think someone saw the dollar signs and and uh, pushed him out works yeah yeah i mean but that was a fantastic restaurant and and so, again, that's kind of where you're torn with gentrification because it does push businesses like that out. Uh, and that's what it's happening in St. Pete. Yeah. Uh, there was a huge story earlier in the year in the Tampa Bay Times about uh, the same exact thing happening. Now that St. Pete is bustling, that, you know, rent's coming due or these leases are coming up. And these guys, there's been a lot of people down there for five, six, seven, 10, 15 years yeah. who've been working really hard to get things up and running. And now that things are starting to happen for them, they're having their landlord, landlords coming to them going, all right, well, uh, you know, your lease is up and uh, we're going to double your rent. Yeah. Or we're, you're, there's going to be a 25%, 50%, 100% increase in your rent. They're like, what, why? You know, and I can see it from their vantage point too. They're upset. They're like, hey, wait, wait a second. We've kept your bills, you know, uh, paid, you know, because of us being here. You need to cut us a little bit of slack here. You need to make, you know, uh, we've been here working hard, building, building this up and now that we get to see the fruits of our labor you're coming in and going no I'm going to go ahead and take half your rent from you right now well it's like right there on on, uh, you know on 4th street right there you know kind of where um uh, right around the 54th area or 54th downtown oh okay okay farther down there was this pizza place there that again talking about pizza there was a great pizza place there that people would hit up they'd stay open late They'd sell up until two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, for people who were hanging out, drinking and stuff. And that place got pushed out and it's probably going to be replaced by some douchey bar or something. Right. Well, the, the, but the guy has a lot of money in a trust fund from his mom. <laughs> right. And so now that his fr- him and his friends have right. dropped, dropped out of college, they're going to open up a bar. Exactly. To uh, to lure women into now. Now that we're getting into a completely different subject. All right. Uh, speaking of no. So these, the, we, this is a story that we actually had on the slate yesterday that we did not get to yesterday, uh, but it's it picked up more traction now. It's gone viral because it's it's hilarious. Uh, well, I mean, on one hand, it's hilarious. On another hand, it's not. But the sign language interpreter at the Seminole Heights News Conference uh, was the story delivered confusion, not clarity. So did we find out exactly what happened here? Well, hold on. Lisa just wanted to chime in real quick on the Lisa pizza Kraft? topic. Yep. She says, for pizza dough, you use a chilled wine bottle to roll it out. No rolling pin needed. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm still going to go buy the one that's already half rolled out for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's already in a nice circle. I just have to get it. Yeah. Actually, you know what I do? Because, you know, the circle's already probably, uh, you know, 12, in- 12 inches in diameter. Yeah. I just uh, kind of take it and do the old little pizza toss. <laughs> <laughs> choop, choop, choop. Try to get it, you know, spinning as it goes. Now, I'm not tossing this thing in the air, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Just get it going until it gets out, and then plop it right there on the old pan. Put it; it works. It gets the job done. Okay. It's still not as delicious as New York pizza, but most return into the uh, Tampa Police Department's November 28th news conference broadcast live in television and social media. Immediately learned of the arrest of a suspect in the killing of four in Seminole Heights, but the deaf or the hearing impaired watched in confusion. There was an American Sign Language interpreter on camera at the news conference, but little of what she said made any sense. Quote, she sat up there and waved her arms like she was singing Jingle Bells. Uh, Rachel Cetabrino uh, said, who is deaf and teaches ASL at the University of South Florida. Quote, I was disappointed, confused, upset, and really wanted to know why the city of Tampa's chief of police, who was responsible for my safety and the safety of the entire community, didn't check her out. Uh, Quote, we did not request an interpreter for the news conference on the 28th, says the TBT spokesperson. Uh... The TVD is conducting an internal review to determine who sent this particular interpreter to the news conference to provide service. Now, this is the story that I had yesterday, but you sent me one. Was this the same story that you sent me? Yeah, yesterday it was afternoon? the same story. Okay, because I want to know what happened. <laughs> you know, did this is this person a, a, a weirdo? 
and just was like, hey, let me see if I can sneak on television during a very weird time. This is, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to. I think there's, there's information we're not being given here in this situation because from what I gathered, this person just happened to show up, but it was still from the same company that they normally book ASL interpreters through. So I think that this, and she a, wasn't making stuff up. She knew some stuff. Very little. And apparently this woman has a criminal record, uh, and which well, also what kind gets of criminal? really like fraud. Oh, OK. Oh, and okay. Well, now, now we're getting there. So it gets like really tangled up. And I think what happens is probably whatever this third party company is that provides these interpreters, I think they might have just made a bad hire. And, uh, and so this is a person that just needed some money, knew a little bit of sign language and was like, I'll fake it. I just need some probably, money. Probably knew just enough to get through the screening process. Because uh, what she signed as as, you know, the police chief was speaking, she signed, quote, 51 hours ago, 0 12 22 indecipherable murder three minutes and 14 weeks ago in old indecipherable murder four five fifty five thousand plea 10 arrest murder Bush indecipherable uh, three age 24. <laughs> so if you're deaf or hearing impaired, you're watching this going, what the F is going on up there? Is this woman having a seizure while she's trying to uh, sign? It must have been fascinating but frustrating at the same time. I mean, obviously, this is important information they're giving out. and But you wonder how this sort of thing happens. And and, and now we're learning about some of this behind-the-scenes uh, aspect of it, which is that they hire a third-party company to provide these individuals. And I guess this person wasn't properly vetted. Uh, but again, it gets really weird. Uh, and the comment section as always was fascinating as well. Uh, but once you start to kind of peel the layers back, you know, the, the woman, you know, also has kind of a shady past. So it makes you wonder kind of how this all came to be. Cause the timing's also suspect. How would that person know to be there if they weren't asked to be there? Right. So I think we're not we're not being given all the information in that situation. And, and she obviously wasn't uh, given us an interview. You think that the interview <laughs> would be in sign language? You know what I'm saying? Right. Ah, oh, you, you're 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 uh, maybe the first minute or two some niceties get it out of the way, and yeah. then the rest of this interview we're going to conduct in sign language. You know, just because I want to make sure that you are, you know, you're. Uh, but I guess uh, that's not the way it goes. Uh, John Oliver gave it to Dustin Hoffman. I don't know if you're a, a fan. Well, you're you're a, you're a little bit more in the you're a Republican side. I don't know if you're a fan of John Oliver or not. <clears throat> uh, I think he's funny. He, um, you know, and and I mean, he does make good points from time to time in his HBO show. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, uh, I think he's one of the best out there as far as uh, smarts, uh, t- com- comedic timing. Yeah, you know that kind of stuff. Um, very funny. HBO host John Oliver got into a heated discussion with actor Dustin Hoffman on Monday night over the recent sexual harassment allegations made against him. He says, quote, you've made one statement in print. print. Does that feel like enough to you? Oliver asked in reference to an apology Hoffman made after he was publicly accused by a former production assistant in The Hollywood Reporter. Hoffman said it didn't happen the way she reported. Quote, and this is John Oliver. That's the part that pisses me off. He says, that's the part of the response to this stuff that pisses me off. Oliver responded at the Q&A session, commemorating the 20th anniversary of Hoffman's film, Wag the Dog. Quote, it is reflective of who you are. You're given no evidence to show that this didn't happen, which I don't really like that line. You're, you've, you've given no evidence that shows that this didn't happen. Well, you know, in America, you have to give the evidence that shows that it did happen. True. You know? Yep. Uh, There was a period of time when you were creeping around women. It feels like a cop-out to say, well, this isn't me. Do you understand how that feels like a dismissal, Oliver said, according to page six. Hoffman fired back, you weren't there. And Oliver said, I'm glad. Hoffman blamed the incident on the atmosphere at the time of the alleged abuse. Um, I don't know that he needed to go after Dustin Hoffman uh, as much that way because, I mean, this was just one... I'm not trying to downplay this stuff. I guess it sounds like I'm trying to downplay this stuff. Uh, but this was just one incident. Uh, yeah, it just seems like he's trying to pick a fight here in this scenario when there's so many targets. Uh, and 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 again, why not go after Kevin Spacey, who at the time it, the guy was underage, or Harvey Weinstein, which that story is getting weirder and weirder. 
Uh, you know, there, there, there's far more people to go after than Dustin Hoffman. And again, not to minimize what he did, uh, but, you know, to what Jolly and Oliver is trying to bring to light, how is one supposed to prove that this didn't happen or that it didn't happen the way that they say it happened? And that's the problem with all of this is that it's basically his word against hers uh, or whatever the dynamic was there. And, and, and there's very, it's very difficult to, to prove any of it. I mean, we're having this issue now here in the state legislature with uh, well, Senator boy, Jack LaBala. I, I see. I saw his name in the news again this morning. Yeah. I mean, we, I had to talk about it on WFLA on Sunday. And this is a friend of yours as well. Um, or you're an equa- a political equipment. Yeah, I know him. Okay. And then I'm, I'm buds with his son, who's also a state representative. You know, and, and I mean, I don't hang out with them on the weekend or anything like that. But first, the accusers were anonymous. One of them came forward and went public. And then when that happened, he released text messages where she's asking to be in a room with him privately. She's asking for a private meeting with the senator. So, again... Uh, when there is that opportunity to provide evidence and to, you know, a, again, make a claim for your innocence. Was the private meeting innuendo or private alluding to I want to be alone with you? That's well, she definitely said that she wanted to have a private meeting with him alone. OK, you know, and, and so it's text. These are text messages. So it's hard because, again, the innuendo there can be interpreted in many ways. Um, but she did say some other things, how. She wished that she could have met a younger version of him, you know, because this woman's probably about half his age. And uh, so she's now the, 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 the story is getting muddied as actual evidence is starting to come up. And, and, and that's, I guess, what bothers me uh, because it just seems like you're, you're already guilty. You're, you're guilty before you're, you're even given the chance to prove yourself innocent. And I told you, I mean, I had an issue with this in middle school and it seems childish, right? Like in middle school, like how bad can it be? But literally, I thought this girl was into me and we were, you know, kissing and making out like, you know, teenagers do. And then her boyfriend found out about it. And so she took to rape as the reason that that took place to save her relationship with this guy that she was seeing. Right. By the end of the day, fortunately, she came clean and she admitted that because she was lying. That she was lying, yeah, because I was on the vo- verge of expulsion. Yeah, and worse. Yeah. You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Somebody's uh, uh, claiming that. Now, this Dustin Hoffman thing, I wanted to ref- you know, refresh my memory on uh, what it was that he allegedly did. Uh, Oliver's, uh, let's see. Um, allegedly, let's see. Anna actress, or actress Anna Graham Hunter wrote a column for The Hollywood Reporter in which she alleged Hoffman groped her and made inappropriate remarks to her while she interned on the 1985 death of a salesman TV film. A second woman, genius producer Wendy uh, Riss, something or other, then told Variety the actor pr- propositioned her during a meeting in 1991. What do you mean by proposition? Like, hey, do you want to go a- out? Hey, do you want to bang after this? Listen, that stuff's inappropriate, but to string people up over stuff like that, and this, this is the part of this is, this conversation is very hard to have because I feel like there are a lot of different, you know, the spectrum is very long, the, yeah. very broad here. You know, the one end, the coercion and rape and the stuff that like Harvey Weinstein is mm. or, or, or sneaking into somebody's room while they're passed out or so they're passed out on a bed. Yeah. That stuff to me is a very different category than the – the this this propositioning and you know and the inappropriate language or flirting or whatever you wanted to call it at work yeah. that's a discussion that we need to have but I'm not trying to dismiss that that's a discussion of there's so many degrees to it right where do you draw the line all that kind of stuff and, um, and, and at what point do you say hey you know what this happened 20 30 years ago and you know what you didn't say anything then you know why come forward now uh, you know, I think that's a valid argument as well. It, well it's what well, when it comes to assault, I understand because uh, you know at the time we weren't there, we don't know what's in these people's head, and if it's a, you know actual assault, somebody corners you in the room, hits a button, locks a door, sure, and and you're trapped, and they force themselves on you. I don't care if it's fifty which, years later, which is what we're hearing about Matt Lauer, uh, right? Yeah. Well, well, he has. Did he force himself on anybody, or he, you know he said a you know he's got that. I, I, I'd have to look it up, uh-huh. but allegedly there's a story where he locked the room and forced himself onto someone okay. 
the woman passed out, was taken to the infirmary in the building. Apparently, this was like 16, 17 what? years ago. And so, uh, you know, like I said, obviously, I'd like to look into that a little further. You can go ahead and look it up. Uh, but, but that, to me, is incredibly damning, including that Meredith Vieira video. Did you watch that that I sent you? Um, no. Which one was that one? So I sent it to you in Messenger, but it's this video from the set of the Today Show. And, and it's a camera that's fixed on Matt Lauer. And you could tell there's, it's probably during a commercial break or something. Oh, talking, um, or the one that says uh, bend over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, first he starts commenting about her sweater. And the comment seems fairly innocent. It's like, oh, that sweater looks good on you or something like that. And then, you know, it's, then he makes a reference to her bending over and what a great view it was. And he's straight faced. Like, he's not joking. He's not kidding. Like, he's not just making... Uh, he's not just being flirty, quote-unquote flirty. Yeah. It's being creepy. Yeah. All right, here we go. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm going. I'm going. Hey, sweater. Keep bending over like that. It's a nice view. Oh, that is creepy, right? I mean, straight faced. I mean, it's yeah, that's uh. Now here they're just having some fun with today's show footage. So but... he did this, so they're just trying to make it. Yeah, they're just, you know, trying to make it seem. Oh, he's in his underwear there. Yeah, he's in a pair of boxers, but okay. th that, that whole little, and and that's just one, right? I mean, there's got to be. I'm. I'm. A, that just. Th that doesn't just happen once. Uh, what do you think about you know? Because uh, you know, having this discussion, as you as you guys can see, it's. Uh, it's not a free. It's not a, a discussion that moves forward easily. At least not for me. And a lot of people in the media have already thrown up their hands. And you're listening to the radio, and they're going, "Well, you can't even flirt at work anymore." People used to, be, you know, find their husband and their wife at work, and da 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 da. <laughs> now every little thing. I can understand uh, somebody throwing up their hands and going to where does this end? Sure. Um, but but I, I don't think it's about where this end. It's more of a we're having a, a modern day discussion about about flirting. I think I think that just flirting in the workplace will change. And not only that, but things can get out of tr control and need to be put in check every so often. But it's making things awkward. It, I mean, there's somebody that works in this building. That's normally not, they work remotely, they live in another state, but they work as, as a part of this company and they're here visiting for the week because we're going to have our company get together for Christmas and and like even just the, hey, I haven't seen you in like a year, like the exchange, like do we handshake, do we hug, do we, like it was completely awkward. Right. Uh, now when you, so you haven't seen that person in a while, they walk in, their hair's different, they got a new, you're like, oh wow, you look really nice, your hair, and you're going, wait, maybe I shouldn't compliment you on your hair anymore, maybe I shouldn't compliment you on your, your dress anymore. That's the way we were raised. Right. Like over the weekend, I'm at a, a concert. My nieces are there. They're yep. eight, eight and six. And I want to say it was their grandmother or somebody. Or may, maybe it wasn't uh, anybody related. Maybe we were backstage and somebody was just talking to him and how pretty she was, how pretty they are. And you look like a little princess. Oh, you look like such a little princess. You know, one of the, I want in my I wanted to hit that person. I can't remember. Becky, I'm sorry if it was you. I, I, I wanted to hit that person with a <laughs> baseball bat. I don't get this. And I and, and and we haven't gone down this road because again I have a daughter and and so I don't understand your like that seems how, like a, how it bothers me so much. Yes, that seems because like a really big thing for you, and it, I don't get it. It is because every time that I I I feel like we're raising our our little girls to only be one thing. You have to look pretty. You have to sit there, look pretty, look like a princess, be a princess, and then your prince will come one day. And that shit does bother me to no end. Okay, but the, but so for instance, I tell my daughter she's beautiful and she look, you know, she, I like, you know, her outfit and that sort of thing all the time. But that being said, like if she wants You're to part of the problem, man. Yeah. You're just raising another yeah. generation. <laughs> another generation that's going to be subjectified. But like her and her cousin, like if they want to play with cars, we let them play with cars. If they want to go 
climb a tree, we'll let them climb a tree. If they want to go get dirty and run in the playground, we let them. And if they want to put you on know, their princess I, dress, you let them do that too. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. You know, and so even though she's two, like we're also letting her pick out her own outfits. Which are going to be all princess dresses. <laughs> well, but no, and then that's the thing. Like, again, my thing, if you go on my Instagram, it's right there. There's pictures. Like, I love giving her band shirts. Like, Target has this great line of band shirts. And so, like... So she has she's wearing these, little Iron Maiden and yeah, little... <laughs> no, that's exactly what it is. Awesome. So I have she has a Hendrix shirt, be, two Beatles shirts, a David Bowie shirt, and a Beastie Boys shirt. Uh, like that's my thing, you know. Like that's my kind of way of connecting with her. Uh, and you know, she puts them on, and you know, she doesn't know any different, right? But but you know, that's not girly. In fact, more often than not, I'm having to get them from the boys section. Because they don't make them, uh, they don't make as many for the girls. So there's some, like the David Bowie and the Beatles, like they had some girl versions of, of band shirts. But the boys are much cooler. I mean, they have like a Nirvana and they have, okay. you know. I'll, Anyways. I'll, I'll admit that I have an issue, that this is my issue. But I will say that I think that parents need to be, and, and not just parents, but adults need to be very. So uh, you, your thing is about very boxing aware. them in. Yeah, very aware of how you interact with and notice that every effing thing that comes out of your mouth when it comes to your your granddaughter or your niece or your daughter is about her looks and about how pretty she is. And little girls don't do this and not at all that girls do. Princesses do that. Um, yep. I just I don't know. I just think I, I don't know why I'm so bothered by it. I just am <laughs> maybe because I could never I was never allowed to be a little princess me, myself. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. That's what we're really talking. <laughs> yeah. About. Let's get to the bottom of it here. Sit down for me uh, on this couch here, Chris. <laughs> All right, so I had a lot of uh, stuff pulled up earlier for those of you that were uh, watching, but I closed out all of my windows because I wanted to get a better Skype uh, connection with the uh, the guests that we had on earlier today. Um, so. I lost all my stuff, but that's fine because I have emailed well, we a, couple a couple of things, things to me. Um, and here's another one. Now, this is from a few days ago as well. Uh, this is a cool headline. Telsa builds a giant battery to help meet uh, more the power needs of South Australia. Um, but that wasn't it was the reason that I didn't get to it. It wasn't the most, the most sexy uh, t- of topics. I just I love seeing that kind of stuff because I know we're getting closer and closer and closer to being more efficient as a uh, I'm, I'm as fascinated humanity. by Tesla. So, I mean, I'm happy to talk about them any day. Uh, uh, but, uh, actually, and speaking of kind of electric stuff, there is a company that will retrofit old cars to electric. OK, which is really interesting. Yeah. So they're having like these old Volkswagen Beetles and these classic cars retrofitted with batteries uh, so that they can run electric, which I think is awesome. That, is, that would be cool. It would be weird, though. It'd be weird. Uh, well, yeah, somebody it wouldn't make up, any noise. Yeah, somebody pulls up into some old Charger, you know, or you know, some old mu- 69 quiet. Mustang, and you're like, I can't hear your vehicle. <laughs> And but unless, until unless they can uh, you know for some of those old cars if it's a muscle car like that unless they're able to get it to go going as fast as it would with a traditional combustible or combustion engine yeah. there's no way they're switching over to electric. Well, and part of the appeal of those cars is the loud rumbling engine, and so is it the same car once you strip it of that? You know, it is not. It's it's. Are, I mean, are if, you we're this? Ta- if we're talking about a VW microbus, which I saw, that was one of the videos. Okay, well that's that kind of cool. Of, yeah, like okay, because it fits. But, you know, it's hippie, right? But if you're converting, you know, an old Mustang or you, or like you said, a Camaro or a Charger, like part of the appeal is the loud rumbling engine, right? All right, so uh, something else to uh, get to. Uh, the Supreme Court is letting Trump's tr- uh, latest travel ban go into full effect while it's still being challenged in other ways. He said it's okay. Uh, kind of like we were talking about earlier with uh, Corinne Brown, her lawyers trying to keep her out through the appeal process, which I doubt is going to happen. Um, they'll say, no, 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 you you wait in jail, you know, as you're appealing your stuff. Um, the uh, the Supreme Court's doing the same thing. All right, well, this stuff might get overturned, I guess, or some of the parts of this might not hold up. But as it stands right now, the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday handed a victory to President Donald Trump by allowing his latest travel ban targeting people from six Muslim majority countries to go into full effect even as legal challenges continue in the lower courts. The nine-member court, with two liberal justices dissenting, granted his administration's request to lift two injunctions imposed by lower courts that had partially blocked the ban. 
uh, ban, which is uh, the third version of a contentious policy that Trump first sought to implement a week after taking office in January. Um, so the high court's action means the ban will go f- uh, in fully into effect for people from Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen seeking to enter the United States. The Republican president has said the travel ban is needed to protect the United States from terrorism by Islamic militants. So there we go. It's only crazy if it doesn't work. What? It's only crazy if it doesn't. <laughs> it's a Bud Light. It's, I... a, it's a Bud Light uh, tagline, but I think it applies. So that's the uh, latest. (laughs) It's only crazy if it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, So (laughs) do you really think that's going to have any impact on what's happening here in America, uh, terrorism wise? Uh, Realistically, no. Uh, Because So so why did the president do this? Uh, it's a play to the base. There you go. Yeah. One answer, one answer only. Yeah. And that is the... the to, so appease the base. Yeah, appease, it makes him look like he's being tough on something. But I, from what I can gather, this is not going to have any effect on our safety one way or another. No, I mean, our immigration system is severely fractured. I mean, broken. I mean, it, it should almost be completely scrapped and redone. Uh, because we don't have control of our borders, and we're such a global economy now that people come and go as they wish, you know, and, and we don't know. You don't know who is truly coming or going. You know, there's a lot, you know, people are angry at the so-called globalists and whatever, whatever, and there's a certain amount of ire that needs to be pointed into a into that di- direction. Well, I, no, I shouldn't say that d- it's deserved. It's understandable as... Part of the world is moving away from everybody else in the world. Those people who are globally uh, connected and are making their millions or billions, you know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. I'm not talking about, you know, guys like you and I. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking people who are already well in that world. I can understand why uh, the rest of us are going, that's effed up. Because when you're that connected and you have the, that access to those many resources around the world, I mean, that's it's it's hard to even fathom for somebody like me to be able to to move around and move your money around and do the things that these people are going to do. But that's the reality of things. Yep. So the we are becoming more global. Yeah. And so at a t- but it's but because of that, you have uh, uh you know if you like to look at I like to look at humanity sometimes when I'm talking like this how I'm visualizing it in my head. Uh, in all of us as people, it looks like a comet. It looks like a comet moving through space. Yeah. Where the majority of us are all going to be gathered around that one ball right there, you know, and then there's that long tail. But even up here, there's stuff that's out ahead of it, stuff that's around, and then that tail can go for light years, light years. But it's all still part of the same thing. So for those people that are, uh, so yeah, so I feel like the, the the globalists and stuff, they're like the tip of that comet. Now, now I'm visualizing like a match, a matchstick, and you have the little white tip at the top. Those are people who are already in the global economy and have been rocking that since the 80s, you know, or 90s or however sure. long they've been in it, uh, or even going farther back. So uh, the rest of us are getting, or, you know, there's a lot of the, the rest of us feel like we're getting left behind, I think, is that feeling. So it's like, well, what do we can do? Let's, sh- let's build walls. Let's, let's build a castle. Let's keep everybody out and keep uh, all the goodness in. But from my vantage point, and by the way, this is not me teeing off on the president and his, his message. I just disagree. I just disagree with, I thought I agreed for a little bit or I, I, th- I was interested in a little bit because remember the libertarians, but long before Donald Trump, the libertarians were talking about bringing people home. Uh, let's get out of every place around the world yeah. and just focus on us and da, 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 da. And that was, a, that's an interesting, um, you know, philosophy to me because there's, it, it rings like there's some truth in it to me. Uh, but then over the past 18 months, I think I realized that that's a little idealistic to just bring everybody home, build up a wall and, you know, we'll do what America does. No. Okay. Well, that, then you got a generation left at that point. I think that that is more, uh, the, the metaphor I'd, I'd like to use there, the analogy I'd like to use there for those of you from the farming world, I'd like to uh, reach out to my uh, peeps. <laughs> Not that I came from a farm. My uh, father was first generation, or he moved off the farm. So I'm first generation off the farm. He was a member of the FFA. Uh, is when you castrate a bull, or at least back in the day, you would tie a rubber band around, you know, it's sack up there, the scrotum, Ugh. right there at the top. Just tie a rubber band really tight around there and just give it time. And that would eventually, that cuts off the uh, the circulation, all, circulation and yeah. they just fall off eventually. 
And so I, I feel like if you're not careful and you're thinking you're protecting, you're being a nationalist and you're protecting America. Yeah. Um, and you try to withdraw too much and become too much of a, we'll just handle us and you handle you, then we're doing the same thing. And you've sure. only got so much time before. What happened to America? I thought, uh, you know, no, no, it's the, the us, us being as global as we are, there's downside to it, but there's also upside. You get to have a hand in, literally, <laughs> physically, have a hand in every, all the pies that are being cooked around the world. And look, and, we're not perfect at it. Hardly. I mean, but I think I I can't think there's probably maybe only a handful of countries that I w- would say, OK, well, let them take over for a while. Right. You know, but for the most part, I think the the world does need somebody in there kind of calling the shots and saying, you can do this. You can't do this. I don't need or not need, but it's just the natural order of things. There's always sure. going to be somebody that is. The top tier, you know, it has right. more control, more power than others. Right. So whether we like it or not. And then what what, what I like is that we've always been the, the good guys, or at least we thought. And I like this new era. You know, again, it, it for me, it happened, started, uh, you know, September 12th yep. of uh, 2001. And of realizing that the world is a much different place than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. That our place in the world was a, a little bit different than I thought it was. And yeah, not we are a, we are a good guy. Still feel like we are the good guy, but I also can see how uh, we haven't necessarily always. We're not always the good guy. It depends on, I guess, your perspective. Max uh, Cooper comments. Max, uh, only Fisher can use the neutering of a bull as a metaphor for immigration and have it make sense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I do what I can. All this right, message man. brought to you by farming. Get back to the country. Farming. We still need it. <laughs> Farming. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, tuning into the Wake Dot Show today as we continue to grow this. Um, oh, did we even talk about uh, my meeting yesterday? Uh, no, and uh, we had a couple other things. My buddy Chris, if anything, we can touch on that. But go ahead and get it to your meeting first. No, well, listen, well, oh, the only reason I wanted to bring this up, and this is not important because I'd rather talk about Chris, uh, um, it, you know, because yesterday I had a meeting with radio. Uh, at B98.7 and uh, Beasley in a great, great discussion with uh, uh, Chad and Christy over there, Chad Thomas. and um, Chad and Christy in the morning. Yeah, Chad and Christy. They were at uh, Magic 94.9 for many, many years, and then uh, which was my old company. That's how I got to know them initially. Okay. But uh, Cox Media, uh, which is the, the corporation that owns that radio station and so many others, I guess started a policy a few years ago of no more contracts. Uh, they they didn't want it, which I never had a contract. Yeah, corporations don't like they don't like signing contracts uh, because they they want all the power. They you know they want everything in their hands. So yeah. contracts, you know, usually stipulate that the person that's working for you or is is all, also gets to have some say in their life. Sure. Um, so they cut that and uh, some other you know made some other changes. Over, you know, they told me uh, one of the w- the writing was on the wall for them. Because they were the they, they were the official Christmas station of Tampa Bay, you know, every sure. single year, right at Hall. I mean, I think I think it was Thanksgiving. They would fire up the old Christmas jukebox and let that run through the end of the year, yeah, or through Christmas anyway. Well, they said uh, that you know a new consultant, came, a new management came in and said uh, we're not going to do that anymore, and da da da. And they felt that that was a part of the writing on the wall as well. So eventually went over to this new radio station, B ninety eight point seven. Have been there for a little over a year, and I've uh, spent a lot of money on the infrastructure. Uh, building a lot of new stuff, new studio, and now it's time to add other elements on the air and spend the money promoting it. So they're looking for yeah. an afternoon guy or gal, cool. uh, after, afternoon personality. Yeah. And uh, so I went over there and talked to him about that, got caught up. And Which I, I think afternoons, I know you did afternoons at, at 97X2, right? For a very short period of time. Sure, right? yeah, I, but I remember that. And yeah. uh, But I, I've got to say, I probably love doing middays. I think middays is a fun shift. Middays is a great shift, but it's also the shift that has the least amount of people in it now because of automation. Sure. Because, mid, you know, when it, uh, just for a little inside baseball, if you guys are even interested, um, in the radio world and television as well. Dry, well, I don't know about uh, radio world. Drive time is are, are the times you, you know, those are the, the money big maker. money shows. The money makers. It's yep. morning drive and afternoon with people in their cars. Middays, people are listening at work, uh, but they're they're not necessarily listening. They're working. Um, you have, you know, smaller numbers and stuff like that, but it's such a great shift as a talent 
because your shift was used to be 10 to 2, 10 to 3, something like that. Yeah. So you'd come in at, you know, 8.30, do a little bit of, and, and you're not doing a full-on show show. You're talking over music. So you just right. have your artist information, what's going on, you know, uh, on the website, and what's going on in town, and you just go, hi, blah, 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 coming up, another 100-minute music hour. You know? I, had a, I had a mix show in my uh, shift. Oh, at noon. I was a 95.3 party in Orlando, and I had DJ Magic Mike doing the lunch the mix. The Magic Mike? The Magic Mike. No kidding. Did my lunch mix, yeah. Wow. Do you know Magic? So could you get Magic Mike on the show? Probably. I mean, we haven't talked in a while, but yeah. I, I That would be cool. Magic Mike is- Dude, he's a legend. He's one of my early- He's the king of bass. Yeah. Feel, 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 feel the bass, 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 bass. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just a song, really. Yeah, that just had bass in it. That was his thing, man. He's still he's still a spinning man. He's at House of Blues all the time, and uh, you know, I think he lives out in Coco, but he he does pretty big gigs in Orlando often. Drop, mm, drop. Well, it's the Beastie Boys, but I think he sampled well, that. You're right. He sampled yeah. that in his drop the bass. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I remember getting a cassette from him in the late '80s. It was maybe 80, 8, 89. It mm-hmm. could have been 90, but I, I, want, I think it was a little earlier than 90 um, because I was DJing back then. I had started DJing, and I was DJing parties and this and that, but I was not a good yeah. DJ. I, I was a good – I'm a charismatic personality that was playing music, and I was you know better at weddings. And you knew what songs to pick. I was better at weddings than I was at, say, club nights. Okay. All right? Uh, but there was a girl at the school who knew this guy. At, I want, was he out of Miami back then, or was he from Central uh, Florida? I think he's from there, but he his success because of the bass movement was out uh, of Miami. Was out of Miami, but yeah. he was for originally from Central Florida, I think. I think which, so, which is I, where I'm from. So she knew this guy, and she had a cassette. She's like, you know, you should start playing this stuff at your gigs. It was DJ Magic Mike, and I put that in my my uh, my 1971 Volkswagen Volkswagen Beetle Bug. Yeah, and within two months, I think it was within two months. I had ripped out my back seat and put two 15s back there. <laughs> put two 15s, put little uh, horn tweeters up front, sure. you know, that I got from Radio Shack. They were realistic. It wasn't big money. It wasn't, they did you make a rattle? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, that changed my life, man. It was a whole new, new level. Oh, there. man. Well, let's talk. You know, this is, uh, yesterday we uh, didn't get a chance to do a full show, and uh, this is one of the uh, topics yesterday. Uh, a guest that we had on the on the Wake Dot Show on Friday, at, towards the end of the show, a friend of Johnny's. We had him on to promo a fundraiser that he was doing over the weekend. Um, for well, I guess it started. This wasn't year number one. This was a year number two, I think it was. Yep. And it started after a deputy had lost his battle with cancer. Yeah, stage four cancer. So year one, he was still alive, and they were raising funds to cover the medical costs. He lost the battle with cancer. And so this year was to, uh, again, continue to cover some of the costs uh, from uh, his treatment and then, of course, funeral costs and that sort of thing. So on Saturday, uh, this happened on Saturday, right? Yeah. They were having this uh, carnival, this big event, and he was directing traffic. Yeah. So, again, it's the Deputy Morrell Memorial Carnival out in the Fishhawk Lithia area that happened over the weekend. And uh, and so uh, anybody who lives out that way would know that uh, once you even through the Fishhawk area, but even just past the Fishhawk area, it gets really dark at night. There's no there's very little street lights out there, even though it's a very heavily traveled road. Uh, And and then if I remember correctly, the church, which provided the grounds for the carnival, was also kind of on a bend. Uh, And. Uh, yeah, and he, he went out, he, he uh, you know, the reports are that he went out to direct traffic, uh, and uh, in, in going out into the road, he was hit by one car, which knocked him into the other lane of traffic, uh, and uh, caused uh, him to be hit again by another vehicle. Uh, I don't know if uh, his, his death was instant or not. I would hope so uh, in that kind of a situation. Um, but, uh, I, I do want to bring, you know, just to mention it because, <clears throat> you know, when everybody's saying the same thing about an individual, you know, how true it really was. And everyone would say that he was always the first to give you the shirt off his back. 
anything that had happened in that community, regardless of what kind of a fundraiser it was, whether it was for a baseball team, a soccer team, uh, if it was for, again, uh, you know, a deputy that had passed away, uh, you know, whatever kind of community, whatever the community needed, he was the first one to say yes. And what do I need to make it happen? What do you need? How do you need my help? And, uh, and, and nothing was ever too big or too small for him. Um, what was his last name? Sigliano. And so Chris Sigliano, uh, again, you know, a, a very much a New Yorker, a proud New Yorker, uh, who moved down here some years ago, uh, and, uh, a family man, a business owner, uh, you know, a serial entrepreneur. I mean, he was always looking to start new businesses and, and, and not, not just any business businesses that he really felt that the community needed, uh, you know, that, that would bring value to the community. And, uh, and he, I believe he was a retired, uh, police officer. Uh, he had, he retired from the New York police department, uh, before he moved down here. Uh, and again, he, he was that kind of typical New Yorker, which sometimes he'd kind of rub people a little bit the wrong way. Cause you know, a little abrasive, yeah, a little abrasive, but his heart was, I mean, gold, absolute gold. And he was always, again, first in line to help you out if you needed anything at all. Uh, always looking for ways to uh, make his community a great place to live. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, you are hearing now the stories in the comments section and on Facebook about, you know, Chris gave my daughter, my son, their first job. You know, he, you know there was one where it was he gave this young girl her first job and whenever she, and she eventually enlisted in the military and whenever she'd come home from deployment he would always like buy her lunch and catch up with her and like sit down like this was someone who uh, again you talk about people who don't deserve something like this don't deserve to go to go out the way that they did and 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 Chris is absolutely that person i mean he was an incredible dad you know he uh he had, he adopted his his wife's son, you know, when they got married, and uh, he he just uh, he he gave so much uh, that uh, really the re the main reason I wanted to bring him up is is because I think if you're in that part of the county, um, because I know it's not easy to get to, uh, but uh, the Fishhawk community is having a vigil for him uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, uh, I believe they're in Fishhawk Ranch. And, uh, and so I would, I, it would mean a lot to me, you know, as someone who was a friend of his and, you know, I was typically on board with any of his entrepreneurial exploits. You know, I made logos for him, actually the deputy morale carnival logo that he eventually put on t-shirts and flyers and all that stuff. I made the logo for that event. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and, and honestly, what was it like? Uh, how did you find out on Saturday? Um, <clears throat> I was DJing a birthday party, uh, at the Tampa Marriott. Oh, and, that's tough. And I luckily I hadn't checked my phone all night, and uh, and I'd, so it wasn't until afterwards. I was sit, I was literally waiting for my car at the valet Good. at the Tampa Marriott, and when I when I came across the story, and uh, and and I told you, you know, right after that gig, I hadn't had any dinner. The the there wasn't anything really uh, at the event for me to eat, and so I decided to go to Hat Tricks right up the street, and it hit me. In the middle of the Wisconsin Ohio State game, this is a sports bar. It's packed from end to end, I'm surrounded by people. They're having a good time watching Balling. college football, and I'm losing it. I'm just sitting there by myself, losing it uh, at you know just the thought of uh, a great man who uh, definitely left too soon. And I know some of these things are very cliche, but I mean you can't underestimate the impact uh, that this community will suffer from having lost Chris Sigliano. The, uh, the the founder of the Riverview Charity Operation Lotus says he was just just basically said exactly what you said. He's just always involved in helping uh, in the community. Whenever she needed help with an event or fundraiser, he was happy to pitch an immediately quote. He just didn't even waste a second, not even a breath. No, that was that's exactly <laughs> right. Well, I'm uh, I'm I'm sad that I didn't get a chance to uh, meet him. We had him on Skype, uh, but we couldn't get the audio. Yeah, we and that had... was that was it's just it's a very um, a surreal thing. Well, like exactly right. I mean, we had him on our show on Friday and had some technical issues. But even after the show, you heard me. I was talking to him yeah. after the show, and and we were catching up a little bit. And I had plans to take my daughter to the carnival on Sunday, um, and I, I just I really couldn't bring myself to it. Um, because even talking about it, like I kind of feel myself like kind of going there emotionally and trying to like not to go there. 
uh, just to kind of hold it together. But don't worry, I'll, I'll cry for us. <laughs> I'll tear up for us. Yeah, I mean, don't you worry. Uh, and and now you know being a dad and and seeing that this guy who meant not only so much to his community but so much to his family has left three children behind uh, is is incredibly devastating um, and and it's just there's there's not enough that you can say about him. Uh, so that uh, that vigil will be held at Park Square Plaza 7 p.m. on Wednesday, mm-hmm. and uh, see I'll, I'll cry for you. <laughs> a GoFundMe campaign created by Hyde had raised more than 10400 by Sunday afternoon for his wife and three kids, ages 3, 9, and 11, and the stepson, 21. Well, that is sad. That is yeah. sad. And then, it's, and sometimes, you know, because you said, uh, you know, people that, that don't deserve to go out like that, I, I wonder if uh, those people that go out like that have – a hundred times the impact, a million times the impact in a community uh, than if they would have just drifted off off elsewhere because they've done so much already. And, and in a moment like this, it makes you take stock. You know, if you're looking at this person a certain way as a pillar in the community uh, and as somebody that's always giving and always out there, um, well, then how many people, how many dozens, how many hundreds of people that he's affected, thousands of people that he's affected over the years sure. goes, well, holy crap. Um, you could go at any second, so I got to get out there and make a difference. Well, and you never forget that person who gave you your first job, and and he did that for so many young people in that Fishhawk area, and 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 sure, it's a nice community. You know, it's not like there. Yeah, they don't let people like me in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know, the, it's certainly you know not an impoverished area or anything like that. But again, at the end of the day, you know, he was very supportive of the young people in that community and, and gave them again their first jobs and and really served as a mentor in many ways and uh, and and so he, he did he touched a lot of people and and I think now everyone's really starting to take stock of that and, and realize the the impact he was truly having on that community and I'm sorry for your loss by thank the way. you all right well uh, tonight I'll be out at st. Pete Beach and uh, we'll be doing some trivia trivia night tonight at Boulevard Burger st. Pete Beach tomorrow night downtown uh, St. Pete uh, karaoke at uh, at Park and Rec from eight until midnight, and then, a, and then a brand new. Th- yeah, you, you coming out this Wednesday? I think so. Maybe. Oh, well, you got the vigil. If you're going to go out oh, the fish right. hawk, that'll yeah. be at seven o'clock. Right. So maybe you need to come by afterwards and do some singing. You know, you get some really emotional. Yeah, singing. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole well, the whole bar is stopped, just staring at you as tears are coming from your face, yeah. and you're singing some uh, Bette Midler, "Wind Beneath My Wings." Well, maybe we could start taking requests uh, here for the show tomorrow, and we'll we'll incorporate a song or two to to uh, promote your your park and rec night. I like that idea. And then a brand new uh, trivia night Thursday nights back at St. Pete Beach at Mastery's uh, Brewing at Blind Pass. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for being part of the Wake Show today. Thank you for all the shares, the likes, the comments. It means everything to us. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, the Wake Show, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 on Facebook Live. <laughs>